yeah, dude, I was born ready, bro. Hey, I, th- I, I think we we're... have 44. Are we, wait, are we live? Hey, hey, guys. <laughs> we're live. Are we really? I don't think so. Are we? are we live? Can you guys hear us? Let me see. I don't, I don't see any I, comments. I think we're live. We are live. Hi, everyone. Today we're doing comparison. I am here. Wait, let me for, before I forget. I am here with a guest, Brian oh. of Whisper well, Status, formerly Whisper Status 74, now known very well in the community as Brian's Tech Therapy for the tech enthusiast who really wants to buy the latest and greatest, but he's here to set your expectations straight. <laughs> <laughs> What's and, up, guys? How's everybody? All right, Brian, what are we doing today? What do you think we're doing today? All right, well, I guess, where are our comments? You see okay, the comments? I don't, I don't see the comments. Hold on one minute. Hold Let on. me say hello the to the gang. Hey. Oh, there's one. Oh, yo, FOMO, I see you. I don't see anybody else. What? I see. <laughs> hey, every. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, now they're coming in. Okay, so let's do audio and video check. I'm doing my e-cam again. I, worst case, I have to go on, on StreamYard. But let's see. Audio check. How's my audio? And video What's up, check. Mr. Mystery? What's up, David? What's up, Lees? What's up, Corey? What's up, David? What's up, Jay? All right, they're coming in now. What's up, Terry? Okay, so I want to make sure that the video is available for, well, so make sure the video looks good. You can see both Brian and I, and we're out of the way, and you can see the TVs, and you can hear us. So how do I sound? How does Brian sound? I want to make sure that you can hear us all. Hello, 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 hello. What's up, Majid? David? Jariah? What's up, I, I will turn on the lights to do a... We, we should do that right now while we're talking, after we talk. And But I can tell you, I think off the top, it looks very similar, but you know, we'll, we'll check it out. I was just checking the audio with Brian uh, before we get into the direct image comparisons. <laughs> the S90C audio is actually a little bit louder and there's a little bit more clarity than the S95C. So, and, and neither of them are loud enough per se, but don't wow. get the S95C because you're thinking the audio is better. And, and that's just to start off with that. We, I'm not going to say more because I, I want to go into more of what I'm noticing <clears throat> the differences and what you're really paying for. But Brian, so let's, so go ahead. Let's set the stage. Okay, set the so stage. W- what we're talking about here, guys, is the S95C, the premium model, the step-up model. We have a 77, 65, and 55 this year. It has the one connect box and is a bit brighter versus the S90C. LG G3 is also in the picture, but what we're looking for is the difference between the two going to be worth it for you. Um, And I will tell you, this will be a very fun stream. We're going to shoot straight at you right from the very beginning. And here we are talking about just the audio test. Um, But really think to yourself, what matters most to you? We have the same manufacturers, the same use cases, right? FOMO, same specs, other than the One Connect box, perhaps build quality. And I think uh, this is probably a great comparison. You know, th- and that's a great start. Let's just start with the, the technical spec differences, right? So you guys are that's seeing right. some of my my shorts that I put together on the script on Kaleidoscape. If you guys have it, it's awesome. It allows me to cut the scenes I want to compare. And I'm not adjusting the exposure scene to scene. So sometimes you'll see it's a little underexposed, overexposed. So ignore the scenes for now. What we'll get into more detailed pauses later. But as far as setting the stage, so the S95 scene and the S90C. What's important here is they're both 77 inches. Now, why is that important? We know for sure that the 77 inch size uses the latest in chemistry as far as the OLED blue. So the latest OLED blue second generation, as opposed to first generation, which was on the S95B, on the 77 inch, both the S95C and the 90C use the same next generation panels. However, on the S90C smaller sizes, 55 and 65, there has been discussion, is it the later one? Is it the older one? Who knows, whatever, right? I would like to give Samsung the benefit of the doubt that they're all second gen, but Samsung never went out and said yes either way. However, Samsung display was very clear that all 77s are second generation. So that means that when you compare the S90C and S95C head to head, 77 inch, it really is more of apples to apples in terms of the actual panel supplier 
Samsung Display, both second generation. If you go smaller, 6555, it's always that shrug. How do I know, right? Samsung won't say. And some may even suspect that the S95B could be using second generation as well. We just won't, don't know because like LG, they just want to get rid of all these extra panels yes. from last year. And they're so close that it doesn't really make a difference. But in this case, I want to make sure they're both 77 inch, which they are. Now, obviously, as you can see, the G3 is a fair bit smaller. It's a 65 inch. So this also helps you, hey, you know what? Should I get a 65 or a 77? This gives you the relative size, right? S95C, S90C are 77 inch. LG G3 is the 65 inch. They're all in filmmaker mode right now. No enhancements. They're both, all three of them have dynamic tone mapping off, S95C, S90C <clears throat> static. And I'll, I'll go through the, the settings in a second for you guys to see. I haven't adjusted anything on the settings. They're out of the box. Now the S90C, once we go to skin tones, you'll see what I was sent. I suspect it must be calibrated because the white point is just, it feels a bit more accurate because I did get it from Samsung. So the S95C is mine. I picked it up from Best Buy the minute it was available. The S90C, Samsung sent it to me to compare. And coming from Samsung, you know, who knows? I would like to think it's maybe calibrated because it just feels like the white point is just more spot on, but it's very subtle. And that tells me the S95C looks pretty good. But yeah, there's that slight richness that's not on the S90C. So forget color differences if you notice it. What we're looking at is luminance differences because ultimately, if you get it calibrated, they'll all end up looking the same. And like yeah. scenes like this, right? Wow, they look very similar. So if you're choosing based on pan, you're like, okay, flip a coin, get the cheaper one, which takes us to, well, what are the real differences between the 95C and 90C on the hardware side? So the panels are the same. Audio apparently is the same, or if anything, I feel the audio on the 90C might be a touch better or louder. So with the 95C, definitely get a sound bar. G3 as well, terrible audio out of the box. The 90C has slightly louder, but it's not head and shoulders. I mean, I feel the Q, the QM8 had better audio than all three of them. And then we go to the actual casing. The 95C has a one connect box, which is very convenient, but keep in mind, it's a short cable. So I have the one connect box literally on the ground and there, it's just enough. It's like, what, like two meters, barely yeah, that yeah. just enough length from where the TV is to the ground to my one connect box. If it was any farther away, I'd have to call and pay like a hundred dollars for the longer cable. I have a longer cable. That's like 15 meters, which is very long, but keep that in mind. If you're getting the one connect box, it still has to be within, I'd say six feet or less of the TV, maybe less, right? So on the one hand, it's convenient, but it's still gotta be close to the TV. But I do like the One Connect box. That personally, I've had it with a QNIR, so I like that. So you're paying for that. Secondly, supposedly Q-Symphony is better on this, but I've tested Q-Symphony very in depth last year on the Q90B, on the Q90A, I had the Q990B, the, the flagship soundbar, and it sounded better without the Q-Symphony connecting to the TV. That was last year. Are they improving it this year? Who knows, but don't get the sound bar just to match it to your TV. I had it off anyway, it, it made no difference. It didn't add anything. If anything, it added more confusion setting it up. Uh, what else is different? The 95C, okay, so the processor appears to be the same. I think they are the same. Everything as far as high quality content looks the same. What may be different is if I send low bit rate content, is there a possibility 95C might be a little bit better? I don't think so because it's probably the same processor. Yeah. The brightness is on the software level. So now we get to the part where, oh, you know, you can go into the service. So people have been telling me you could go into the service menu on the 90C and change that, what they call Anna Peak, to a level where the 95C is. But I haven't done that just to see what it's like out of the box. And I'll show you the scenes where possibly the 95C is brighter. But I'll tell you this. Well, let's wait until the end. It's not, I don't want to give everything away, right? But that's what we want to look at is brightness. Now, this, these are all HDR movies straight from Kaleidoscape HDR10. I will compare them HDR10 plus using the, the new Spears and Muscle. So 10,000 nit HDR10 plus. Now we're pushing both the 90C and the 95C. And then I'll try to compare all three of them with just basic HDR10. 
and to see at 10,000 nits what it looks like, like are the specular highlights different? And then we'll also take your questions, uh, whatever you have. So, and I noticed we had a super chat, so I was going to scroll up. Yeah, yeah, Brian, sure. what, what are you curious to see? So, I mean, for you guys too, the question is when we get into price differences like these two is the difference would be you can get a 65 inch S95C for the clout or what you think is the higher end, or you can go a size larger. Same with 55 to 65. Also, in theory, what is most important to you? Is the One Connect box something you like to have? For me, I could care less about it. Um, it's also another component, in my opinion, that can fail. It does have its uses. But for you guys, when we're looking at these TVs, really think to yourself value and can you go larger with the 90C versus the 95? And, you know, I wonder if it'll change with tone mapping enabled, whether it's static or active. Maybe it shouldn't push the Q195C more, but perhaps it will show itself. Maybe in one of these scenes, FOMO, we can change that so we can actually see it flex. Yeah. But they're very close. And uh, it kind of reminds me of C1, was it C1G1? Mm -hmm. where people thought the G1 was going to be a lot brighter and it turned out they were virtually the same. So, I mean, well, I, great that we're doing this first. And at that point, what did we conclude? What was the point of the heatsink? Remember the A90J as well? Like, wait, the A90J and the AEJ look so close. What's the point yeah. of the heatsink? And the A80K ends up being a touch brighter than the A90J, yeah. which had the so, heatsink, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah. so for here too, guys, always think about the bragging rights of anything. Um, if you can have a larger 90C, um, and you can enjoy almost looks like a hundred percent of the picture quality, then that's the call to make. But that's, what's so important about these comparisons is checking your ego at the door and saying, wait a second, which one of these benefits me. And now that we have a 77 inch, it makes all this so interesting because 65 yes. to 77 is night and day. Um, yeah. so I think that's what makes this so fascinating. And so let's get to the super chat so we can get caught up and get all excited, everyone. And again, thank you for coming by. And I also want to ask Brian about the Sony X95L 85 inch. You are literally one of the few, if not the only YouTube reviewer or even any reviewer that has had a chance not just to see it, but spend over 12 hours with it, comparing it against the QN95. <clears throat> I wanna ask you about that. Hey, so, Sean, uh, oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Sean, thank go you for on. the super chat. I hope, hi, hope all is well. Saw Brian's S95C, Q95C comparison, great as always. Point is, if in a dark room, which video was shot in the Q95C could match with the S95C, then what will it do if the room was bright? Kill it? So Brian has had even more time, but during our live stream, we had the S95C and the Q900C <clears throat> in a dark room and a bright room. We felt the S95C and the 900C looked very similar. And in some scenes, the 95 c was brighter. And this was a lot of gaming comparisons though. And in vivid mode, SDR, that's when the 900C became a little bit brighter. But that was about a month and a half ago. I know you've had direct Q95C with the S95C. What is the brightness comparison for you? So the Q95C, if we put them, it all depends. FOMO and I spent about 17 hours in a bright room with the Q95C, or I'm sorry, with the S95C and the G3. The minute you put it in direct sunlight, I mean direct sunlight, it's unwatchable. It has to be the 95C, the Q95C, the, the, the S95C. Oh, oh, the S95C. Okay. So I just saw it at the store. I'm doing a video on it with direct sunlight, and I think you know, Classy had mentioned that the same kind of look with the QN95C at different sizes, not at the 85. The 85 is very clean, but the S95C, if the sun hits it just right, it is an absolute. It's useless. It's like light gray. But the sun has to be right on it. And it has to be the sun, not really your lights or anything. Um, in a very bright room, the QN95C will destroy it. Absolutely. But okay. it has to be a very bright room. It can't be yeah. your living room. I'm talking about it. So for the most part, the S95C beat it in every shot. Just in depth, and it was bright enough. I'll just keep on playing the script. If if it ends up that this live stream dies, it's because I'm, I'm playing... These comparisons and the studios oh, just said, you know what? Stop that. <laughs> so, Sean, so Sean, for, for Sean's question, um, in a very bright room, the Q195C will win, um, but it would have to be bright enough to where no other TV could really hang in it, to where OLEDs would struggle. But in a moderately bright room, the S95C still beats it. 
And I wanted to add this question. And we're going to get to your next super chat. Thank you so much, uh, Sean. Classy said, the white point at, from the factory from Samsung have a wide variance. So that could explain why I noticed the slight differences. If anything, the S90C, I thought maybe it feels a bit more pleasant. So yeah, so that's something to think about. I don't know about the other companies though. So, you know, Classy, if you have experience with that, let us know and get up to here. Next super chat. Thank you again, Sean, for that super chat again. I had a Q900A, a Q900B, 85 inches, twice returned because of DSC. Q900C was looking good in a bright showroom, was better than the 95C, and as good as the S95C. Samsung with one connect box, picture in picture, it gives more than the Sony or any other. So this is a great comparison. I think Brian, this gets to Brian's Sony X95L. So for context, the Sony X95L it is, I believe, their best mini LED ever, but it's 85 inch only in the USA. Brian, is the QN900 or 95C or 900C and the Sony X95L, forget 8K, what did you see when you saw that Sony X95L compared to the competition this year at the 85 inch size? The 95L or the 95L? X95L. X95L is the best LED I've ever seen out of the box. I mean, it was gorgeous. Depth, clarity, it is not as, I mean, I wanted to compare it to the Z9K, which I will at 85 inches. It is not nearly as bright as the Z9K, but its light control is next level. I mean, I could, I had a hard time making it bloom. And the colors, the processing, all that Sony market speak appears to be legit. So um, um, the nine. So I just want to say for context, everyone, the Sony has less than a thousand dimming zones. The yeah. 900C and the 95C at 85 inches has over 2,000. So twice, more than twice as many dimming zones. So this is Sony finally delivering on their promise that it's all about the software. And twice as many dimming zones, to me, is pretty significant. So I'm glad you brought it up because we had this with Vizio years ago being 3,000 nits. We had a lot of zones, light control. But we have to start getting into what picture quality is versus how many zones. Because if they're not used well, it doesn't matter. Where Samsung, the 900C is guilty of dimming the entire screen to limit blooming. The QN95C doesn't do that, but the 900C does for now. The 900B and 900A both did it in the beginning of the year. They were both updated throughout the year. So 900B is very bright now, um, not, as, not as much at launch. So I think the 900C is going to need time. Um, but I also think it's being throttled because of all this AK concern with energy. Um, the QN95C is excellent at 85 inches. So I'm still buying that TV, even though I love the X95L, but that's purely a gaming um, reason for 144 hertz for me. And I would suggest, Sean, if since you have a showroom near you, if the Sony X95L is available, do a comparison. Let us know what you think uh, with the content that you're familiar with. I think it's important that people check out the X95L because the price is about the same in the US. They're both uh, just yeah. over 5,000, right? 5,400, yep. something like that. And then of course, the thing with Samsung is though, by Black Friday, it'll be closer to 3,300, whereas the Sony will still be 4,000 or more. So the Sony will preserve its pricing, but the question is maybe this year, it may be worth the premium. And yeah, I have to say, check out Brian's video. You did a little bit of gaming on the Sony X95L, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're curious about it, he goes into detail. And what did you call it? You called it the the Master Series. That's not called a Master Series, right? I mean, is yeah, it Yeah, I mean, good? everything about it's a Master Series. I will say with gaming, um, the challenge I have with Sony is it's the game bar is anemic in comparison to LG and Samsung. And as much as I like the game mode, how it looks, they got rid of dynamic contrast in the menu. Live color doesn't seem to do much. So the flexibility of image is very limited. Where Samsung, you can make it look like a cartoon or you can make it look real. So I did a comparison on gaming, which I'll show you guys. And it just it's it can be close if I make the Samsung look very accurate, they match up. But if you wanna make one look more saturated, then Samsung is the way to go. And uh, I like what they're doing, but taking out dynamic, dynamic contrast for a lot of you guys is, is a problem because you like to make things look more saturated and you just really can't do that with the Sony. But it's right. at least it's not a weakness anymore. Right. And, and, it, and it sounds good. 
compared to the Q195C, which sounds terrible. I really like what Corey is saying is it's great that we have access to these TVs to help people make decisions because some people don't want to wait until Black Friday. And seeing the X95L, like, wait a minute, maybe I should wait until Black Friday, save some money and get the TV that I want because it is worth the time to get the TV. Now, one thing, though, speaking of the 85-inch X95L, there's another 85-inch that I wanted to talk about before we jumped into the comparison with the S90C, which is the Hisense UXK. I've confirmed limited availability. Now, Robert Zone is a retailer this year for the UXK, and I asked him, well, is it true? Because everyone's telling me there's only a few of them out there. I mean, someone threw out the number 500 units total for the USA for all retailers. So I told Jesus. Robert, reserve <laughs> that one for the shootout. I need to see that against the QN95C and the X95L. I mean, it's $5,000 MSRP. And I think Amazon had it for forty-one thirty, and it was gone. <laughs> it was literally, and there may only have been two units, by the way. So when I say it's gone, it's not like they sold all 500 units. But whatever allocation Amazon had that morning, after I posted, hey, it's up, and now it's you know street pricing, 4100 and change. About two hours later, I went back up. Like, wait, is that a stock? So I reached out to Hisense to ask them. And Robert's telling me that more will come in July. So it comes in batches. But if you guys are really looking for the UXK, don't wait for a deal next year. You either buy it sometime this year at the best price you can find it, or just wait until next year's version when they sell more. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we know for sure the UXK is limited availability. And you know how much money you're saving? You're saving maybe between that and the X95L, close to $1,000, right? Sony's going to be available all year long into next. So, But it's kind of cool to see Hisense challenging everyone in this marketplace. So I think that's kind of cool. Well, absolutely, but I want to touch on this quick. As we were doing the QMA comparison, as much as we like the QMA, and I know you love the QMA, when you get into TCL's settings and Hisense's settings, they can also be anemic. They mm -hmm. always, oh, that, that's not available here. Oh, the things you like aren't available here. So I still think both companies have a ways to go before they catch up with the refinement to make things look the way you want them to. I would never buy them sight unseen. So that's the one thing these word of mouth brands that, you know, FOMO and the rest of us have been talking about. If he can't get his hands on one, it's very hard for me to recommend you buy a $5,000 TV and say, hey, I've never seen it before. And that's right. what I've said to TCL and Hisense when I met them was, guys, you're, you're a word of mouth company. And them selling this many makes them look at me and say, well, you're stupid. Look how many I sold. I'm like, I will not recommend them if I can't see it myself. He, they've asked me, what do I think about the QM8 versus the QM95C? I have not seen it other than on CES or on the stream. Therefore, I cannot recommend it. Can't see yeah. it. And I can't go through those settings. So until they figure that stuff out, they're very hard. And I got to be able to say to you guys, hey, after this stream, go into a store and check it out. And they're not willing to do that. And I think that's terrible. I think they need to have that access for you guys. So what, what else have we been checking out this week that was exciting to us? Oh, I should have the Hisense U7K, U8K this month at some point. Uh, so we'll make that comparison for you guys. Most importantly, I'm gonna get the U7K versus U8H because I think their pricing are similar. So a lot of you will be asking, wait, should I get the U8H on sale? Or the U7K, which is newer, if they improve their processing, yeah. we'll see. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put up- Give them a shot if you can't see the TVs. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Superlex Badzilla, what's happening? Corey, what's happening, my friend? Badzilla, how are you? Silverback, Samsung is the bestest TV. Uh, Giger Mass, my S95C One Connect box emits an electrical buzz. Can only hear it when the sound is low. Also has four dead pixels, but can see it in normal content. Should I keep it or exchange it? I would exchange it immediately. I don't believe in, I know, I know there's a, if you try to go through a warranty, Samsung, I believe, allows 12, 11 or 12 dead pixels, as long as they're not in the center of the screen. I would send it back. And play the, if you're, if you're going to play the panel lottery, I would play it because the screen uniformity in the S95C is very good. Exchange it immediately. Chin Tupat, what's up? What's up, Zach? Zach, we're here. S95C doesn't seem worth the extra money. That's exactly why we are here. Um, but I think that, brings up a great conversation of 
It's like we talk about with other manufacturers. Save the money, say, with a C3 and get yourself a soundbar uh, in comparison to a smaller G3 or anything like that. Here, it's great because you can say to yourself, let me get that 77 or 65. And also in the chat, guys, let me know what the main, what do you guys think the sweet spot size is now? Is it 65 or it has 77 become more commonplace for you? What's up, AJ? Jan, I hope you're joining your G3. David Hollis, I bought a Hisense and it's so laggy I couldn't take it. That's kind of what I'm talking about. That kind, that that operating system, that kind of stuff I had even with my TCLs, I could not deal with. So I think some of that stuff, I hope they're getting better with it. Um, I remember the dual cell a couple of years ago. It was like four pages of settings. So let's see who else we got. I'm gonna yeah, swap out my disc. disc. I'm having right, trouble reading ahead. reading the disc right here. So I'll take this. All right, Uriah, I would I want to see UAK versus QM8 versus X95L. Well, if Robert gets those, well, I mean, our hope is I think we're looking at FOMO. I think we're looking at an 85 inch comparison this year instead of an AK one. That's maybe what we may do. That's um, what we want to do because, because AK, well, actually, let's ask the crowd. Would you guys rather see an 8K shootout? or an 85 inch best of shootout, like flagship 85 inch, X95L, QM8, UXK, QN95C, maybe 900C as the 8K rep in there. Yeah, that's they're, yeah supposed to be that's their best. Their best, I mean, what do you guys think? For me, the AK is, uh, it's just Z9K again, the Z3 is not releasing here. So I think it's not really worth doing. I'd love to see, as you guys mentioned, the UAK QM8. That would be a great comparison. Throw in the QN95C in there, especially since I think the QM8 and the UAK are planning on having more zones. I think the UAK, the UAK is supposed to be what? Over 2000 nets, FOMO? The U8K so, is supposed to be, okay, the UXK is over 2000 nits. I think the UAK is just under 2000 nits, like 1800. The UXK, the UXK is their flagship, though. Yes, That's the UXK their... is supposed to be the brightest TV that you're going to be able to buy this year yeah. anywhere. That's not an outdoor TV. <laughs> Can't watch yeah, those it. Those outdoor TVs are With those. insane. I'm going to have to swap discs. I, I need to get the actual final Go production ahead, version. Oh, wait. And there's, you know, Classy, you know, also says Hisense cheats window measurements, though. You know, that's another thing to be mindful of is that's why I'm saying when I looked at the X95L, brightness doesn't immediately jump out at you, but the picture quality does. It has a very OLED like look to it, but it's bright. So yeah. I kind of had to leave that thought of how bright is it? If the Z9K is 4,000 nits, but struggles to control its local dimming, which it does, especially the 85 inch, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Many of you would prefer the X95 in that regard simply because the blooming is minimal, if any. So when you talk about flexing 3,000 nits, if they can't control it, it serves no purpose, um, especially if it blooms. I want to hit this question, the Super Chat, real quick by Gimpy Gaming. Ahead, brother. I can't Thank see you. him here. <laughs> Could you recommend a disk or a streaming source to demonstrate Atmos well, like HDR stuff for audio? Okay, so... First, let's start with the reference disk. Technodad has just created an Atmos demo disk that both serves as a demo and for you to calibrate your Atmos system. I definitely oh, nice. highly recommend you get that. So go on Technodad's channel, Technodad, and he'll have it right. He handmade this disk and he's so proud of it and it's amazing. It will test and push the limits of your Atmos system because that's what it's designed to do, right? He's going to move things. He's going to tell you, do you hear it? Do you hear it? And he'll have actual Atmos content. So that lets you know that your system is fully Atmos engaged. Okay, but that's just reference. It's very much the Spears and Munsell version of Atmos. As far as actual Atmos content, concert content. So the one, who is the... Soundtrack guy that did Batman. Uh, Zimmer, Hans Zimmer. His concert soundtracks are amazing. I forgot if they remastered in Atmos, but concert soundtracks generally are great once they've been remastered in Atmos because they do want to get that Atmos feel. 
and they're constantly constantly releasing it, but they're not always the highest Blu-ray quality. It's not always 4K HDR. It could be just regular 4K. It might end up even being 1080p. But the next up are definitely the concert discs. If you also want HD, well, actually, yeah, like HDR, but audio. So concert discs on Kaleidoscape, they have a hand curated selection of music, of music discs, actually. I may be able to look up for you right now because I have the Trinov curated music selection and Kira, uh, and Trinov specifically selected this stuff. So let me see, uh, family friendly music. Here we go. I think this is Trinov's music selection. So what did they choose here? So, you know, there's actually a Mr. Techno dad. Yeah, uh, yeah, not him. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I've never seen. He's got four hundred forty-four thousand subscribers. I just seen. These him are Chunov's favorite in terms of music quality. They may not all be at most, but for sure, this is their favorite. Star is Born, featured song is shallow, but the entire disc is pretty good. Across the Universe, Hans Zimmer live in Prague, Adele live at the Royal Albert Hall, Muse. I, I saw that one. I really enjoyed this concert. Muse live at Rome Olympic Stadium. I mean, I saw it in Clyde Escape. I saw it in Rome. The Greatest Showman, obviously. Bohemian Rhapsody, definitely excellent. So those are some selections, but there are always new ones coming out. So hopefully that helps you. Gimpy G Gaming, thank you again. And think, I think we had another super chat real quick before I sw swap discs one more time. I think we're looking at uh, early August for the A95L. Early August, is that what you're getting, Brian? Hey, Thank thanks again, is. Sean. And Sean. I have experienced myself Q900, QN900 series, 8Ks get better with upgrades and by year end, so firmware upgrades, and by year end, they are one of the best. But why does it take so many firmware updates to truly shine? Also, if Q900C versus X95L, 85 inch comparison can be done. Yes. I can do that. I, will I talk can to do that. Robert. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I yeah, yeah. you have access to both. Definitely do that because then you can see for yourself, does 8K make a difference? I mean, resolution or dimming zone control, right? Because you were saying how the depth of contrast was so amazing for the Sony, right? So I wanted to yeah. see if that is more important than a few, <clears throat> four times the number of pixels. Even well, and you'll, you'll see, well, you'll see it go against the QN95C Monday. So I have that comparison done. And you'll see the difference between those two. But um, the Q900C is not as impressive as the QN95C, which makes no sense to me. Uh, they, have, they have some kind of issue of, of, of penetrating the pixel density with their light output. I don't know what's going on with it. But uh, to your point, the worst part about us saying it gets better with updates is the AK TVs are so expensive. And they drop by like 40% by the end of the year. It just means you should never buy one. And the problem is nobody mm -hmm. reviews them anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, and no, and that's a problem with reviewers too. They cannot really review TVs at 85 inches. It's too expensive. Um, so you never get, even from digital trends and our favorite guys, uh, ratings, even Vincent, they cannot review TVs that large. So it leaves a lot of us, like with the 83 inch MLA, I was able to compare that to the 77 and it's very dim in comparison to one without MLA or with or without. People can't do that comparison. They can't buy them or whatever. So it's tough to recommend any 8K TVs right now for that reason. I, I feel sad. I think my Panasonic has died on air. This is... <laughs> and the 9000? No, this is the 820. Because I go through them. I, I literally have a new one every year. And this is why I have to get the best buy replacement. <laughs> and it's... Uh, I, I do have the Revon that I can use. I so, hate yeah. the Revon. I know. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, and, and I have a a Sony X700 in the back. So, you know, if you can handle a few. And this is why I have you on, Brian. Is to the I got you, baby. I got you. What you need? All right. So uh, I'll be right back. Let me get my Good other thing. player. You got to go out in the garage? I think it is in the garage. Because, I, I mean, is that sad? The Revon costs like 800 bucks, whatever. And I'd rather get the Sony. Because I know what I'm one, doing. You, you got one quick super chat before you bounce oh, oh, from uh, Ron, Ronnie Savage. I see it. All right. Hey, Ronnie, thanks for the super chat. Where can I buy the One Connect box for my S95C? My TV didn't come. <laughs> Ronnie, Wait, what? <laughs> Ronnie! <laughs> so you're not actually turning your TV on? 
<laughs> it is literally That's... like saying, I bought a computer, but it didn't come with a GPU. They're bringing oh, wheels it, in my car. I, 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 got a, <laughs> right. I got a car. Where can I get an engine? It didn't come with an engine. So, 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 so Ronnie, connect- somebody, so, somebody, somebody bought that and then returned it and forgot to put the thing back in it. I would just bring that back. I hope you're joking because that TV doesn't work without it. But yeah, Ronnie, bring that back. There's no, you wouldn't be buying one. You can't buy them separately. I don't think anyway. It so, so Terry, six, 69 Dark Man, love Terry. Terry, what's up? Terry had with the Z9K, uh, bought the, I think the 75 and Z9K last year. Terry also had the TCL 8 series, or was it the Hisense? Which one was the the first mini LED? I think it was TCL. The 8 series. Yeah, TCL, TCL 8 series. So, Literally the first mini LED to market. So Terry had that, and then um, Terry, you can say in the comments, um, that that TV was another one that crushed blacks horrib- horrifically in the beginning, and then it was updated, and it was actually a very good TV. Um, but Terry having the Z9K was like, which one of these TVs is going to beat my TV? And the answer is none of them <laughs> in terms of uh, light output. So uh, the Z9K is still king of the hill. And um, Sony's signature of not crushing blacks and not dimming the screen, it's still the brightest TV out there. And, the, and the, it's the only TV I've seen beat the S95C, which I have that comparison coming as well is the Z9K does beat it, but it just simply overpowers it with brightness. But I don't know if you'd agree, it's got better picture quality. Um, 85 inch X95K or 77 inch S95C, same price. Um, I would typically tell you the larger TV matters, but that's a trick question. The question for you, boss, is what size are you coming from? If you're coming from a 65 and you're upgrading to 77 or 85, the jump from 65 to 85 is very large. The 85 may feel soft. So the S95C is just more feature packed and it's just better looking, better gaming, better features. Uh, Even though the 85 inch X95K is very good, it's a big jump. So it depends on where you are. If you're at a 75 inch TV or already at 77, I would go with the X95K if you have the space. But um, if you're coming from a smaller size, I would stop at the S95 5c because it's just that good it's really the best tv in the world right now the s95c at least until sony comes out with their tv in uh, august so are we not building the the a95l as you either destroy it or you lose i mean isn't that crazy well i mean the a95l the challenge i think sony and we'll talk about this before formal comes back is when these TVs position themselves for release is so important. You have TCL and Hisense just hanging out in the back. Just like, okay, put it on now. <laughs> you know, where Sony hanging back, I think, helps them in one way. They had extra time, and now they're the ones being talked about. Uh, the challenge is they're always more expensive. So what's interesting is the X95L releasing now is very similar in price to the QN95C because the QN95C is not really available at 85 inches so they're virtually the same so that one's okay but by the time the a95l comes out samsung is already on to next year so just like we saw with the a95k last year it was a very expensive gorgeous tv the challenge was a lot of you guys bought that and then all of a sudden the s95c was already being spoken about so that concerns me about them coming out so late but i think the a95l is going to be something special. I think they're going to push the brightness on it and it's going to be, you know, there's rumors of its own uh, separate SOC. There's rumors of 4 HDMI 2.1. There's rumors of a lot of things is why they're waiting so long, which is virtually impossible because the TV would have to be built by now. Well, people K clearly, is, is it, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say people clearly bought on rumors with the Hisense UXK, sight unseen. Rumors they should send of you some money. You put that TV. You, you put you built you they, they you put them on the map. I'm right. Telling you, high since you put them on the map because, again, that word of mouth brand. I could never, ever just buy one just just because I heard. I hate to say because I heard us talking about it. I mean, I saw them at CES. The QM8 was very impressive. Um, I like what I saw from Hisense a lot, especially the lower end Hisense um, being all mini LED. They all looked good. And I think FOMO wasn't the six series for Hisense was supposed to be their gaming TV. Right? A seven that, series. The seven. Yeah. Uh, the U7K uh, thought... this year is a dedicated gaming TV. I think it uniquely comes with 
HDR10 Plus Gaming, which yeah. this year only the Samsung TVs have. And I think Hisense is the only non-Samsung TV that's introducing HDR10 Plus Gaming for PC. This is only for yeah. PC titles, and it's compatible with NVIDIA graphics cards right now. So, Well, NVIDIA's out there building Terminators now, so they're not really worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA's like the new Cyberdyne systems. Okay, right, so. the Revon is working. Revon in the house. Show me that. that uh, Revon's got that cool backdrop. I, I could only I could only hope. So let's see what happens with Revon. Let me plug in. <clears throat> now is the Z9K good for gaming? Um, it's gorgeous, but it's still a Sony in terms of gaming, meaning that flexibility of image is still pretty, pretty uh, again anemic. You can game on it, but it's not. It's not. It's you know, it's strength. Okay. All right. As far as my, uh, Michael Walker, I bought the uh, Nakamichi Dragon soundbar system on rumors. I mean, the problem with sound, it will always be rumors because we can't really display sound for you. So I, I don't think you took a big risk. You can do YouTube videos all day with speakers. You won't know until you get it on. So I think you're fine. And quickly, guys, we have 230 in the chat. Please take a second to hit like for my guy FOMO. This is incredibly hard what he's doing here, uh, comparing these TVs. With, it takes a lot of time. Uh, equipment fail. Yeah, and my boy's always operating without a, live without a net, always. You know, this is my, my plan C. I had a plan B that also didn't work out. That's why I was testing all afternoon. It's like, oh, no. So quickly for you guys, I also do have another question because I've been getting a lot of comments about the 85-inch X95 being too expensive at $5,000. Um, comments about the G3 at 77 being too expensive. Now, I will tell you, being part of this for many years, I remember when the Vizio P series was four grand at 75 inches. Do you feel these TVs are too expensive? And I will let you know, these TV companies are struggling in terms of their revenues and their budgets. I don't know where else they could make things cheaper considering your phone is like $1,500. So what do you guys think is fair in terms of pricing? If you're honest, what do you think is worth it? An 85 inch TV at $5,000. Uh, think C8 at 12 grand at 77, C7, uh, 15,000. So these TVs are actually relatively cheap in regards in, in you know, in perspective. What do you guys think about the pricing of these TVs? And because I think we have to look at $2,000 for an 85 inch TV or uh, things of that nature is, is difficult. Okay, uh, so everything is working real quick. And just an update for you guys. Unfortunately, I cannot test HDR10 Plus because Revon does not play HDR10 Plus. There are only two disc players that does HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. That would be the Panasonic's 9820 and the new Magnetron, Magneton, I forgot what it's called, but that crazy $800,000 player. So I normally recommend the Panasonic UB820 because it's much cheaper and plays both. So here I have the Revon, but it's only limited to HDR10. Okay, so that being one, the case. One more, one more super chat, my friend, from oh, Aaron. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Great question. Aaron, Aaron. Oh, I see it. Hey, Aaron, thanks for the super chat. Why do regular shows look crappy on my 77-inch S90C? <laughs> How do I fix it? So this, you may have stumbled on the one kryptonite of the S95B, S95C, and S90C, which is low bitrate content, does not look good on the these QD OLEDs. Now, it doesn't mean it will look that much better on any other TV. So with that in mind, Tell us, show with us, what is the source? Is it YouTube TV? Is it a cable box? Is it just over the air? Generally speaking, it upscales fine. If it's a high quality DVD, upscaling is great. The issue is low bandwidth content, low bitrate content, where there's not enough info, and then the TV doesn't do a good job of filling in the blanks, right? LG does it great, Sony does it great, and Samsung 
QLEDs, Neo QLEDs, the Q95C, 900C, that's fine. The issue for whatever reason, even though it looks like they're using the same processor, doesn't look good on the QD OLED. So that's why people are waiting for the Sony A95L. They may have questionable internet connection and they're streaming. They may like YouTube TV and they want the best processing available. That's when they pay extra for the A95L. So Aaron, let us know what is your source? What are you watching that quote unquote regular shows like crappy? For example, if you're watching Friends, what is that? 720, 480? <laughs> and it's not upscaling it well. Yeah, not a surprise. So yeah, let well, us know. And for, else. And for, well, uh -huh. and for Aaron, and for Aaron, in things like that, that's when you want to start playing with the presets and start going for your filmmaker mode. Start taking off the dynamic contrast. Anything that is enabled out of the box, that's when it does not help low bitrate content. So a lot of times the Samsungs, if you're in standard, will have dynamic contrast. It will have active, well, tone mapping wouldn't be there for non-HDR. But go in, take the sharpness down a little bit, have a preset separate for that kind of content. Meaning leave yourself a custom preset of some kind that is really bare bones. Because a lot of times the extra processing that Samsung loves really hurts uh, that old, really grainy material. So I would do that, go into cinema. It might look muddy at first, but it'll look better for that kind of content than, say, standard or any of your more vibrant. A lot of times you guys keep them in standard, which does not do Columbo or MASH or any of those any favors. How are we doing, FOMO? Oh, we're doing great. Okay, there we go. It's interesting. The S95C treats the signals differently than the S90C. As you see, when if you're doing the same signal, S95C kind of goes through a different process. So they, the S95C feels like it has more reds, slightly touch of richer red, and they're so that one's out of the box. S90C I got directly from Samsung corporate marketing for reviews. So. But I did look at the settings. It didn't look like they've done any adjustments. So I suspect that it is just panel variation out of the box. It's, it doesn't look like it's been calibrated because the white points are untouched, right? So something. Well, they, cherry, they also cherry pick them. So that maybe yeah. it's a very good. I might sample. have a cherry picked one that looks really good, right? All right, let me see. Oh, here we go. We got another super chat from Sean, right? Yep. Did we see this? Did we do this one already? It just came up. Oh, thank you, Sean, for that super chat. Having a Q900A and Q900B, 85 inches, and seeing the 900C, I could check in showroom the HDR tone mapping by Samsung is a big upgrade. Yes, I agreed. Year to year, they do improve that. Frankly, some may not agree, but if you have 8K for two years, it spoils you. They're so good. And so this is something that, that I have a discussion with many people. Is it the 8K, Sean, or is it just better processing, more dimming zones? Because until this year, remember, the 900A and the 900B had way more dimming zones than the 90A or the 90B or the 95A or the 95B. This is the first year where you had the same number of dimming zones, same mini LED backlight as the 8K TV. So maybe this year, the 95C will look similar, if not identical, to the 900C. And also, with higher density pixels on the 8K, you have to burn a lot more energy just to get the same brightness. And then you might have to deal with other issues that are unique to the 8K that they have to overcome with processing. So that's just something to think about. But I'm glad you like it, Sean. Now, I'm wondering, will you ever upgrade to a Sony Z9L or Z9M whenever it comes out, right? Thanks for the super chat. But Brian, you see both these TVs, 8Ks, 4Ks. Do you have any preference? So I, I will say that friends of mine that have 8K TV swear they're sharper. Um, the pixel density is there, so it would yield a sharper image. Um, I've had AK TVs, um, older ones, which to me were noisier for that reason, except the processing is now better. I have not noticed a big difference in terms of detail. If you told me the X95L was AK, I would have believed you. Um, the detail in the Z2, um, Z9, and ZX was evident. It's an AK um, OLED, but can I say that the 8K makes a difference um, in regular content? I have not seen that. Um, I haven't gamed in 8K in that regard on a larger one. I've gamed in a small. I will say gaming in 8K, native 8K is very different, but it's impossible to really um, move. Even with the 4090 without the LSS, you can't do it much. So 
I don't notice a big difference in 8K as far as the pixel resolution and content. But if you see it and you've lived with them for a couple of years, you know, Terry, you can tell me if you notice the 8K difference with the Z9K. I have not noticed it being an 8K thing. So yeah. when I compare the, when I compare the Z9K to any other TV like the S95C, I never once thought it looked cleaner because it was 8K, even with the and, spears of muscle. And that's an important point to remind people that you're you're not you're paying extra for the word 8K, but I don't know if the improvement is there this year. Maybe in the past we had better processing, right? But real quick, just want to show you guys that everything is the same on the S95C and the S90C. I haven't gotten to the service menu of the S90C to do anything crazy, right? Out of the box, they are both identical as far as settings. And then real quick on the G3, making sure that that will be on also Filmmaker. So what, Filmmaker mode. Just so that it's kind of apples to apples. Obviously, you can make adjustments, dynamic tone mapping, and so forth. But just out of the box, I want to make sure that they're as similar as possible in terms of their filmmaker mode. But as we've seen, you can make one look so much like the other, right, Brian? It really yeah. is a unique number of content that's different. Or yeah. SDR brightness, like, oh, I need it super yeah. bright. That's when they separate. But for people watching Netflix, get the TV that fits your home that you can afford as far as these are concerned. Yes. And the look of the manufacturer. Um, I think the G3's gaming has not been up to par in comparison to LG in the past. So that gives, to me, that's why I would choose the S95C. And by this comparison, the S90C would be something I would consider if I needed a larger version. So what I've seen from us just playing around, because we were on about a half an hour early, uh, yes. the S90C, um, even in this scene, is actually brighter than the S95C. All right. Let me make sure I adjust my exposure a bit. And I'm looking at the quality. Oh, by the way, I love the streaming quality that I'm getting today. This is why it's worth spending time to get it right. I think the resolution, for the first time, I'm happy with the resolution I'm getting on my stream as far as the TV comparisons before, oh, it just looked terrible. So I just want to take a step back and go, wow, I just saw the YouTube. Like, oh, this looks great. I'm so happy. Yeah, so it does look this look good. So as you can see, if you look at the white background, right, clearly these are very different technologies coming out of the box, white point. The funny thing is what you see on YouTube is a slight blue on the LG. In person, it's actually not that blue. It's a touch magenta <laughs> on mine, yeah. whereas the... S90C on YouTube, you can see the white point slightly different. And the S95C has a touch of magenta, which I also see. So the S95C and the S90C, when my camera captures it and puts it on YouTube, looks very similar to what I see. The G3 does not look that blue. And this is why we tell people, when you're looking at YouTube and comparisons between two different technologies, you can't really do it because what you see is not what the camera sees when they send it to YouTube. I don't see any of that blue at all. But if I adjust Actually, to either, fix that either blue. Either do I. Either oh, do you I. don't. Oh. No. The G3 for the win. Yeah. Next slide. <laughs> G3 <laughs> is all about being white. I mean, it's got the white power. Jesus, yep. G3. Look how white that is. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. And then what we're going to do is 10,000-nit content. So I'm going to jump into 10,000-nit so you guys can see. I mean, this is the answer you all's, all want to ask is, okay, the S95C is supposed to be brighter. Is it noticeably brighter or do we need to pull out the meter? Because let me tell you guys this, if it's, let's say, the difference between 1,000 nit and 1,100 nits, you cannot tell the difference. When it's a nit difference of 10%, it is not possible to tell the difference. You, you have to go from 1,000 to maybe 1,200. That 200 nit difference, then we're talking maybe. 1300, okay, now we're seeing a bit more. This is why when you see an OLED, oh, this year it's 800, last year it was 700, I got an extra 100 nits. You may not notice it, right? But if you go from 700 to 1400, okay, yeah, yeah. twice the nits, twice the brightness significance. You know, it's an algorithmic perceptual thing. So, but I would always suggest for an extra thousand, if you can get a larger TV, that looks even brighter. It's, yeah. it's free brightness without having to pay more per what pixel. I love what I love about this image, though, here is if you look at the her background on the S95C, that is a whiter background, but there's more light on her face on this image as well. 
there's more light on the S90C face, but there's brightness to the background. So maybe that's the pixel control um, mm -hmm. where maybe the S90C may appear brighter at times. It doesn't have the dimensionality of the S95C, but I can't see why that would be the case without the software doing it. And here you see the color difference out of the box panel variants we talked about, right? All three TVs, out of the box, factory settings, no changes to the white point other than what it is out of the box. And I see that the S90C looks more similar to the G3 in terms of her, the level of flushness in her face, whereas in the yeah. S95C, yep. doesn't her face look a bit more flushed? That's that red push I'm talking about that's out of the box on the 95C. So when... I, th I think Sammy will be here in a couple of weeks at the end of the month to calibrate my TVs. If I still have the 90C, we'll see how off or on it is. But again, it's panel variance. So just because I have what could be a more accurate 90C doesn't mean you will get it, right? You might get one that's completely off or very close. But I think this is very similar. But so. do you see that in person, FOMO, where her face appears brighter um, with a little bit of a darker background on the S90C versus the the... 95C has almost yes. a whiter background, but her face is... Now, is her face darker or is it better detail as far as... Do you see what I'm saying? Like mm. Her face is almost a little washed out on the 90C in comparison to the 95C, but it's darker. And, is there more dimensionality for you? I think that's the, the saturation. I think the 95C is more saturated. This is what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And, and, but I and think, this, I think I looking at them, I think the S95C looks better. Um, it does just look like it's High Def News right here. Boom. High Def News says, what's up, High Def? The S95C looks more accurate, um, which is interesting. But I do yeah. think that at I first you might look at, yeah, you might look at them and say, oh, I want the brighter one. But this is where that dimensionality and attention to detail might make a difference. Yeah. Hey, Sean, thank you for that super chat. After the software update, Q900C had got brighter in a showroom. So if it gets to improve and also has minimal DSE, then isn't it a great deal as a QD OLED 85 inch it may not come so soon? Yeah, you're going to have to wait at least two years. It's not coming next year. I saw no hints of it at Display Week, nor has dis uh, Samsung Display promoted that it'll be bigger. They're just trying to fill volume demand for the 55, 65, 77, 49, and 35. So they're trying to focus on what they have now before adding a smaller volume 83, which would cost them a lot to tool up for. So I think for sure, uh, yeah, X95L is not great for gaming. I think the 900C or the 95C may be the way to go if, if you like Samsung. And it's what I would say for Americans, because I don't know how sales go. If you have your heart on the 900C or, 900, or 95C, please wait until October. They go from 5,000 to 3,300 to 2,600. I mean, it's that fast. And if you have the AAA membership, American Automobile Club, boom, it's down even lower, possibly under 2,000 by the holidays. So it, it's just crazy how quickly Samsung discounts their TVs in the same year. Hey, Ninjisha, haven't seen you in a while. Ninjisha, what's up, bro? This man makes his living calibrating Hollywood reference monitors, Hollywood client monitors. So he always welcome to come by. What's happening? FYI, FOMO, I purchased a 77-inch S95C after doing all my comparisons with studio reference displays. Oh, wow. Wait, nice. Wait. Ninjushin, does that Left mean... LG? He left LG? All right. What? Does that mean that the studios are considering the S95C? Because obviously, if he's Could you imagine doing calibration to studios... He must be calibrating the S95C to see that difference. So, I mean, I'm just saying, I know you may or may not be able to say anything, but are you implying that studios are turning to QD OLED and leaving the LG Dolby Vision client monitor? Or are they having two? One for Dolby or, Vision, or, one for everything else. Or, this is this is opening a can of worms. Or Ninjishin, are we done with the BVM and we'll start having little QD OLEDs as a reference? Is that what you're telling me? It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> but we saw that, right? Flanders Scientific. Their twenty thousand dollar fifty five inch reference monitor is a QD OLED, and they've done something. So now it reaches that maximum capability of two thousand nit specular highlights. Obviously, it's going to have fans and everything because they don't care about audio, right? And it has all the SGI connect or SDI connections, everything that you need. But regardless, twenty thousand that's ten thousand dollars cheaper than you normally get with a reference monitor. And Classy wants to tell us the skin tones on the G three are wrong. End of stories. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thanks for your input. 
<laughs> she should I can't wait for the Q, the QD OLED monitors. I can't wait for Samsung to release those. That's going to be sick. Right, right. So let, let me get into the, I'm not used to the controls here. So let's go to the content real quick for you guys. I wanted to kind of walk through. So we'll go we to should actually, We should actually bit. compare them at some point. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> hour and 20 minutes. Huh? And this is another thing about other players not called Panasonic. I cannot slow it down. All I can do is pause for you guys. So my timing has to be spot on, right? So like right here. Okay, so I think I caught it at the peak. Now we're at 10,000 nits and as you can see, the brightness looks very similar between all three TVs, right? There you go. Let me turn this down a bit. I'm gonna turn the exposure a touch down so we can capture more of that. Okay. What's up, John? John Hooper, what's up, baby? Hope all's well in Vienna, my friend. He's in Vienna? John Hooper in Vienna. It's one of my guys. I did not know that. White horses, man. <laughs> Do I see these on my sleep? <laughs> wait, wait, no. I, I miss the white horse. I gotta go back and, and see how the Oh my god, is. we see them in our sleep. Okay. So, so all the detail go. of G3 and is gone. They so look very different. See, the tone mapping looks great or very similar. Let me turn down the exposure so we can see more of that detail. A little quick here. All right, much better. Okay, so um yeah, they all look good to me. I mean it eyeballing it. They all have similar detail. No, yeah. the S95C actually has a touch more grass. The S95C and the G3 have a touch grass on the left-hand side. There's a bit more grass. Notice that? Let me turn down the exposure a bit more. Might be. You were, we're counting blades of grass. Throw yeah, off you got hairs. You got it. <laughs> I got to weed whack that side. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and, and, and and these are the thing. I mean, when you pay extra, you want to get every blade of grass, right, gang? I mean, this is what well, you're paying for, and if it's well, worth you, it to you... Well, we say that for you PC gamers, we know chasing a few FPS is worth a grand. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to really discern here. They do look different. Yeah. But the colors overall, you know, un unless they're next to each other, they look phenomenal to me. I mean, Beaver, new edition. Beaver. Okay. All right. I want to make sure you guys see the, the right exposure. All right. Let me check any super chats. Yes, the S95C looks a touch more saturated than the S90C to me as well. But again, it could be fixed in a calibration and I, th I know classy has been calibrating these things as well so and, and if ninjushin has chosen the s95c then clearly after calibration is going to be great yes it's because they only have so much money tim and so the 10.5 mother glass plants are delayed everywhere not just lg right we're talking lg samsung display even boe that wants to get into large oleds they're focusing on 65 and 55 first yeah, remember guys, 80 something is still, the margins aren't there. So they much rather sell more 55, 65, and 77 than the few of us that buy 80 something. That's why I'm going back to mini LED. I, I wouldn't see. buy an 85 inch mini LED this year if I thought that a QD OLED was around the corner or an MLA OLED was around the corner. Yeah. Oh, here we go, found it. Hey, Ronnie, thanks for that super chat. Do you guys know the model number for the One Connect box for the S95C? Uh, yeah, hold on a second, I got it. It's okay. uh, Z4. No, do it in your mind. Why would I know the number of that? <laughs> it's off the top of his head. You're I mean, crazy. Ronnie, what do you think I have? Oh, it's a uh, six, seven, five, four. I don't know, Ronnie. You'd have to look that up, my friend. I mean, you can hit up Samsung. I would not know the name of it or the number of it. Thanks for the super chat, but I wonder, you got to be trolling, Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. I know, right? You know he's not a troll because he's actually putting his money where his mouth is. I know, so Ronnie. Ronnie. But like another suit. We had some. It's like our third. One Connect. One guy didn't get his One Connect box. <laughs> like, do you think the I have the number? Do, Ronnie, is the one thing I'll say about Samsung is this. Their chat support is very responsive. And this is exactly what the chat guys are able to answer, right? They're able to actually look up these things. So tell them you're missing the One Connect box and you need a number. And yeah. they'll be able to do that. 
True. But Ronnie, if you're missing a one connect box, that TV doesn't function. So I mean, you can plug it in. I guess. Can you even plug it in? Isn't the plug going to the one connect box? Okay, so, so this is the scene I love because my camera is able to separate the brightness. The S ninety five C is the brightest of the three because it looks like it's blown out, but actually there is detail. If no, I go it still looks good. Darker, it still right? looks nice. You'll see how much more. It's a touch brighter, and this is what kind of like what you're paying for, basically, right? So now you know is for scenes where you want specular highlights, the S ninety five C that sun is a touch brighter than the other two TVs because it's the first to kind of look like it's clipped. If I start raising exposure, you'll see it's going to be the first to clip in that, in that exposure. If I lower it to the right exposure, then it looks like the rest, right? It has all that detail, but then just touching up the exposure just a bit so you guys can see. So if I'm quickly, our buddy yes. at Plasma TV for Gaming, great channel, check him out. My boy does some deep, deep dives. Um, just ask the question. I saw the S90C versus the 95C at the store. S90C near black was darker. Do you see that difference or was it just the source settings? Okay, let me see. What was the guys, if, question? It was, uh, I saw the S90C. This is Plasma TV for Gaming. He's got a great channel, guys. Check him out. Very deep dives. There we go. There he is. Perfect. Good dude. Okay, I saw the S90C versus S95C at the store, and the S90C near black was darker. So here we are. This is the scene that you would be able to compare that. Yeah. And near black areas, you know what? Let's get to the ocean so that during the waves, they have really good near black so you guys can see. But it looks very similar here. But we're going to have, I think, the next scene. There we go. Let's pause right here. And it's not darker. If anything, both of them are slightly lifted. Normally, I would, and Classy recommends this as well, you want to bring shadow detail down to minus one or minus two. So if anything, out of the box, it's a touch lifted. So at the store, because it's in store mode, who knows what their true black is. You have to go in there and bring it to filmmaker mode to get an accurate assessment. But I'm looking at it, I'm eyeballing it, and they look identical right here. And I'll turn up the exposure so you can see that real quick here. Right, so as I turn up the exposure, you see that? The black levels on the 90C and the S95C, if anything, the 90C might be a touch more lifted. Might be. It's the G3 it that's darker. So yeah, oh, G3 is deeper. Degrees. S95C looks a little darker, I think. Yeah. Here, let me go up to here we go. Badzilla okay. says, do you think the 95D will get a heat sink? It has a heat pad already. The QD yes, OLEDs do it, it have has a the heat graphene. Sleep. Yeah, the F, both the S95C like and the S90C have a graphene heat pad. Sony is saying that it has possibly a heat sink, right? Yeah. But, oh, here we go. So if you look at the clouds, if anything, 90C is a bit lifted in the clouds and the top left-hand top left -hand corner, if anything, right? Again, none of them are yep. calibrated. But yep. out of the box, in this scene, uh, because I turned up the exposure, you're able to see this. Otherwise, they look identical. But G3's the got good detail. is not crushing the blacks. But the G3, look at the trees. It's significantly darker. And we know that the G3, unless it's calibrated, near black is going to be crushed a bit. And I see that in movies like Gemini Man, In the Cave, the honeycomb scenes, right? So, But again, it's not fatal. If you're going to get it calibrated anyway, that sh should be able to be addressed. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Plasma. No, don't worry about it. There is no black crushing on the 90C or the 95C. It's the other issue. Slight touch of lifted that would be easily addressed in settings without calibration just by taking it down to minus one or minus two to taste. Yeah, guys, and check out his channel, man. Plasma TV, putting in the work. He really deep dives into the C1. Um, he's got, I think he has a plasma now that he's getting into, but really deep dives, really, really helpful content. Check out uh, Plasma TV game. He's got a really cool channel. Good guy too, uh, a lot of gaming. So a special shout out to him. Yeah. And, you know, it's great to have our community come in here, contributing, oh, yeah. adding questions oh, yeah. and all that stuff. I love it. Yeah. He I means just also seeing uh, all of our YouTube channels help each other and grow. Uh, that's what I think having these different levels of community. But other creators, they always got to support other creators if they're, if they're good people. And he's a good dude. You know, I, I love great that scene. These, three, great scene. these three TVs look so similar because yeah. at the end of the day, the G3 and the S95C cost the same, as far as same size, right? Obviously, the 65-inch G3 is cheaper. The 77 inches are the same. The 65-inch are the same. But 
Look at the 90C. I mean, Brian, we've been through some content now. Which one would you choose if you did neither one connect box? Would there be a reason to get the 95C over the 90C? Um, no. No. I mean, I mean, again, no. I mean, if you're if you're talking about value, no. Um, I would always fear, and this is straight conspiracy, that Samsung would nerf the 90C. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> only because i know how they are um and, if the and you 90s... saw 95c is a touch brighter in you know in that scene with the sunset yeah. right but yeah and i would be and i would be curious that again being the gamer in me where i do instead of just pausing these scenes i play in these scenes yeah. uh, i may see a difference there and i would i may pay for that extra brightness i am not a value-based guy i will pay a little bit extra money for that but and this is a scene most... where the g3 didn't get as bright for the luminance. So if I adjust the, the exposure to capture the luminance on the 95C and 90C, this is where the G3, and, and again, we're talking hairs here, so just so you guys know, but yeah. Go, go ahead, Brian. No, I just think that, you know, for a lot of you guys, it's gonna be at the same size, uh, the differences in price, but I would definitely go with a larger 90C. Again, for you guys, that might be 55 to 65. I never recommend going with the much smaller higher quality, especially the same manufacturer and same technology. You have the same technology here uh, versus, say, LED versus OLED. You have two QD OLEDs. I would definitely go with the S90C from everything I've seen um, in the comparison. You know, though here I do see a little more depth on the upper left corner uh, where it is a little bit darker, which oh, we know about things. Tell about if you the, go back to that, the, that horse, the moose. The moose. The moose. Is that a moose? The moose yeah, so, I mean, the number count for me is in the way. Um, for you guys, you should be able to see it, but the moose corner looks darker. Um, there's more depth in the image of the S95 in some of it. I, I really love how all three look so similar because they're OLED yeah. technology. There's no mention of, oh, washed out colors. or No, this is why you get an OLED. Even though you have a W OLED and QD OLED, we're talking about they are the peak of their... I'd say performance. I know there's more room for Kiriola to get brighter, but for limited color volume, I mean, this is the content that Stacey Spears did, and they look indistinguishable as far as I'm concerned. And oh, Classy wants to say in filmmaker mode, HDR, shadow detail, leave, go ahead and leave it on zero. It may be a touch raise, but lowering it will darken the mids too much. And so there you go. And play with it, right? I mean, that's what it's there for. In some content, you might want to see more black. Like I know you and I like to err on the side of a touch of black crushing for that dramatic effect, but there's no wrong answer, right? If, if you want a bit more detail, take it up to one even, plus one or so. Got our boy Modern Wise is in the chat. He's somewhere in there. I thought I just saw Modern Wise, or he was in there earlier. What's up, Joey? You guys, okay, you guys know who Modern Wise is. He's an OG YouTuber. He is responsible for the hockey dirty screen effect test that all of us use. So what's up, Joey? Hopefully this is one that I wanted to pause in mostly because, and I spoke to John Reformato on this one, for whatever reason, this scene is a kryptonite for the G3. It's undersaturated in the red areas, so all of the brightness is very similar. You notice that where you should have color, the G3 is clipping it because it cannot take the reds that high. That's why it looks like it's a little bit washed out. And I see it with my eyes too. It looks light pink when there should be more clay. And this scene is why I would choose QD OLED because it's a normal scene. It's nothing extraordinary. It's not like, you know, fluorescent neon, BT 2020, extreme green. This is a scene that you would see the Grand Canyon or whatnot. But when it's super bright, the G3 cannot keep up. So this is 10,000 nits. So if I take it to a, a lower grade, let's see you'll probably be able to see them. So if I take it to 1000 nit and then go back to that same scene, less bright. Yeah, the color's back. So in 1000 nit content, you see that? Now they look nearly identical, right? Here we go. Okay. So the color is back. So it has nothing to do with settings or anything. It's just sometimes at a certain brightness level where the pure luminance of the color 
the Q, the W OLED, it just doesn't have that headroom. It's just going to go washed out. It'll be diluted. And this is why the Injurshin and the people of Hollywood, if you want to grade this color at over 2000 ness or over 1000 ness you cannot do it on a non QD OLED TV. That's just, and it's, if you're a video game developer, you also cannot even see the color, right? Because it's too washed out. But for everyone else, this scene is normally 1000 nit content. You're not going to notice the difference. It looks fine. It's when I hit 10,000 nits, where that color is way above five or 600 nits, that W OLED shows its limitations. So I'm not arguing for you guys to buy either one, but, and to be fair, 10,000 nit content version of this scene is very rare. Mad Max. So you know, just a handful of, of HDR videos. So, Foam, what we have here is basically last year's QN90B versus QN95B. But at least with the 95B, we knew it had a different processor, but they still yielded the same image for the most part. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like in order to make sense, they're going to have to, and this is what worries me about throttling the 90C, is this year the QN95C is a good deal better than the 90C. So... um they may they may do that next year, but uh, it seems like that's the exact problem they had last year. Is why would you choose the ninety five C other than the one connect box? It seems like that's exactly what we have here. FOMO, same situation, almost exactly as Could last year's ninety right ninety ninety five. Yep. Um, so they may correct that. Hopefully, they don't correct that with a firmware update. I can't see them firmware update for just one TV, but. I certainly wouldn't want them to throttle it down, but right now the Q90C is the bargain. I mean, and you said the price the price difference is a thousand dollars. Yes, it's so you're looking 3, at five hundred. It's forty five hundred for the seventy seven inch S ninety five C and thirty five hundred for the S ninety C. And here's the sad part: the C three is currently above three thousand. The S ninety C is the equivalent of the G three in performance. But Why would you even? Yeah. I mean, the C3 is dead in the water with the S90C, and if anything, the G3 is at risk because the S90C doesn't have the One Connect box. It's now many people are saying, well, you know, the risk of bent panels. Of course, the S90C is not built to the same level as the G3. Yeah. The G3 is a flagship. The S95C is a flagship. But if it's just image quality and you want flagship image quality, I gotta say the S90C nails it, and its audio is better than both of these TVs. <laughs> so Yeah. What? Well, and also like, so for, you know, what uh, Corey is saying, you know, the, the larger size would win it for me. Also yes. a good combination, Corey would say, stay same size and get yourself a sound bar or put that towards a sound bar. That's where you get the home theater with a sound bar with rear channels and a, and a sub definitely beats out having um, yeah. something like that. So, you know, that, that's cool. Um, the, and Antarctica said the Q95 had more dimming zones than the Q90B. Perhaps that's true. It did not show up in content. I will tell you that I spent a lot of time with both of them. They did not look much different from each other at all. That's what I wanted to ask you about. I said, wait a minute. I thought the X95L had only like just under 1,000 dimming zones, right? Not even over 1,000. And it yet, looks great. it killed it, it, it against the 95C. Yeah. So that's why the UXK, it'll be great to see what it does. Modern wise thoughts on having four TVs mounted on the same wall like a sports bar? Lady probably won't dig that at all. I say go for it, bro. Put it to the test. See what she says. <laughs> Get them together. We can watch it full screen like a movie. All right. So if time to put, wait. Is it this red flower, Classy, or is it the next red flower? But I just had to. They look so great. All three TVs look great. I've already had uh, more requests for the neon frog. Oh, what's up, squirrel? The neon frog people want. but I, You see my shirt? I'm dressed like a neon frog today. I don't know if you guys noticed. <laughs> What happened to that guy? What was it? Uh, neon frog. Uh, Spears. Neon uh, Spears. Spears frog. <laughs> so is this dude? the one? Is this the one classy? I don't know if, the, if you want to do this one. Let me know. The first one. There's another red flower. Like how many red yeah, flowers are there? Here, I'll, I'll rewind it. Let's see if he says stop fast enough. So you got the squirrel. Got the butterfly. You got the. I'm more of an owl guy. The red guy. Butterfly. Is this the red flower, the orchid? Oh, and by the way, so is this the one? I wouldn't say that's red. I think there's another rose. Is a closer up. It's a purple orchid. Look at that. I love it. That that's creative, Corey. You're awesome. <laughs> Six TVs. <laughs> uh, look at modern uh, high def. I say six TVs on the wall. 
to her, and then four will seem that's the way to do it. Over over aim, that's the way to do it. Uh, so Yorama two thousand is saying that's actually lilac. Is is that what we're looking at? Lilac. Now we're florists, <laughs> botanists. Okay. The the one by the yellow one and the feather. Ah, oh, okay. Let me go back to the feather. See, this is how often Brian Class and I watch these videos. Oh, there is it is. This one? Yeah. Is this the one? Yes, that that yeah. This this is a great one. At the, the highest peak brightness of this shot yeah. before it transitions is fantastic. The yellow one. If you skip, let's go back to forget the red one for. Well, let's actually stay at the red one. We're here. Then go back to the yellow one. The yellow one at its highest peak is so bright. Let's stay with this one for for. Uh, for is this the one? So just waiting for it. Okay, so this imagine. is one. I have to say that yes, the color on the top right hand corner of the G three it, it is actually diluted. It's on the one hand it is brighter because it's ten thousand nits, but it looks like that. There's not a lot of color. So if I lower the exposure, you'll see what we're talking about here. Yorma said lilac the color. I think lilac is also a fly. I cannot believe we're having this conversation in the comments. <laughs> I will check. I will check. <laughs> I'm botanist Before Jurassic yellow. Park. That's so. not red. So, <laughs> this is not red. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. We have the, say what, we have the friendly. Oh, stay here though. Wait till this transitions to its brightest point. Is it this one? That's a that's not a flower. Then that's a porcupine. Porcupine. I just said cactus. <laughs> what are we talking is, about? is it this one? When you get that's not, to it, invite oh. me in so I can light talk you through something. All right, all right. So all right, let, well, let's if he's hopping in, I gotta hop out. So I'll tag him in. Oh, good timing then. Okay. All right. I don't know if this is the one. I'm still waiting. Red. He wants. Red, <laughs> this is yellow. So what are you saying, Brian? You're, you're saying this one? So th this one at the highest peak is so bright as it transitions in. You can't slow it down, can you? It's right there. Right. Oh, oh, oh. I just it. oh okay, damn, Revon at the highest peak. I could definitely. Uh, okay, see I it. got it. There we go. As it gets to it, it should go a little higher. Minute. It'll get brighter. Right I there. Caught it. Okay. Ah, uh, it does look That's good. That's a great shot. All three job. TVs look great, yeah. And and this is really good for the LG G3 because the yellow is a bit washed out as part of the creator's intent anyway. So you really can't tell that there's any limits on any of the T, uh, three TVs. Actually, the G3 is a touch brighter. So if I lower exposure just a touch, you'll see the difference. See how the G3 actually is just that very top part of the flower? But it looks great, you know? I can see yeah, why people love the G3. Okay, so, you know, we, we are in search of the red flower. I, I don't know. I, I think it was before the feather. So let's get to the feather. But, so Brian. Yes. 77 inch, same price as the C3 77 inch. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's a red cactus. Is that what he's talking about? Okay, so 77 inch. What would your TV be? If that is just, and I know you are a 77 inch, or you're an 83 inch gamer, so we're not big enough for you yet. But for those in the 77 inch size category, which is me now, I've upgraded to a 77 inch size. What is your TV? Well, I mean, we're gonna we'll take gaming out of it simply because yeah. I don't know how this will show in gaming. I would imagine they would look identical or close to what we're seeing in terms of the C3, for instance, is dead in the water simply because. Mm -hmm it's not competing with an a80 that's not good at gaming the samsung is actually better at gaming it has more features it has 144 hertz it has ultra widescreen uh, it has a lot more to offer even in the game bar the s90c is just the best value going and it, a definite it, must buy yeah uh, again saying that you don't need dolby vision i personally could care less about dolby vision um in terms of you know having it so we forgot to mention dolby vision in terms of you wanting to choose it but uh, HDR10 Plus is a non-issue for me either. There's not enough content, especially in gaming. You know, um, what I want to do while you're here, because you mentioned that ambient lighting, if it's too bright, the S95C was not really watchable. And so what I wanted to do is turn on the ambient light and see what it does. Because a lot of people are asking, wait, how does the anti-glare work? So if you can handle the questions real quick, let's do yeah. that. And I will we'll touch in uh, Classy. And and the ambient light guys, a lot of time. I'm telling you, we watch this. Oh yeah, and, quick like everybody, so we can get more people to watch this and enjoy. 
Yeah, well, so we watched we watched the again the S ninety five C at launch with the G three in a deep in a very bright room for the longest period of time, but it was turned towards us. The light wasn't directly on it, but it was definitely brighter. And the S ninety five C seemed fine. It wasn't until I walked into the store the other day where the light was right on it that I noticed that there was definitely an issue. So him even simulating the light still isn't going to be the same as direct sunlight, which, you know, so for it to really be a disadvantage, it has to be really, really bright in your room, windows right after it, uh, which I don't think any TV does well, but they, that gray coating definitely, or not coating, the reflection definitely is a bad thing. And Classy was saying that he saw that on the QN95C had the same issue. So reflections are one thing, turning gray is another. Uh, Juan, does the G3 match the S90C in overall picture quality? Yes. I think it's looked better in some of these comparisons. The G3 is fantastic. But the G3, again, keep in mind, it's the design. It's thick in terms of an inch thick all the way down, and you have to buy a stand. And the S90 has better gaming features, at least right now. I don't, I don't even know if the G3's gaming features are still locked behind the presets. Modern wise, get the cheapest one, disable Wi Fi, and avoid the updates. Spoken like a wise man, absolutely. I would not update any of these, or I wouldn't update any of the uh, Samsungs. Okay, let me adjust the exposure real quick so you guys can see. That's not so bad. Maybe it's not bright enough. What are we looking at? Yeah, it's not bright enough. Okay. You'd have to be like, I'm talking about, do you still have that light that you had at Value Electronics? Yeah, this one's brighter than that. Let me turn up. I, I just need to turn up the brightness a little bit. Let me turn up to 100%. And if you want to disable Wi-Fi, I mean, you'd have to disable it. Don't say don't take auto updates. It will still take them. Samsung will still over, will go through your auto update. I've had it happen. So you have to just take it offline. <clears throat> no LAN cable, nothing. Don't just put ignore updates. So it'll, it'll still push it. And obviously, if you need to use the NTV apps, you need to be online. So I would just get an Apple TV or something. Which is hard to say. Hey, don't use the TV apps. But okay, so right. this okay, so this light is super bright. Uh, light uh, brighter than most living rooms, so I think I need actual sunlight to it's get, sunlight. yeah, to get the level of brightness that you have, and yeah. then that's why we talk about wow, the Sony X ninety five L is for that room where you have floor to ceiling windows overlooking the sunset, right? Let's see if okay. we can actually find the shot. Now, obviously, it's right in front of the G3, so the reflection's there. But I wanted you guys to see the S90C and S95C. They handle reflection very similarly. Um, but I will have a super bright this as well. So that's that, right? So, hold it. so phone, tell me if you uh -huh. guys can. Can you hold on one second? Yes. Can you see that? See what? Can you guys see the? Look at my camera. Uh huh. You got. If you can full frame me, can you full frame me or no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me full frame you. You're gonna have to adjust your exposure. I can actually see it on my camera. So. Here. Let me make you big. There we go. Okay, let me lower the exposure on my. Uh... Actually, I can't because it's a video. Okay. That's that's the S95C. Can you see the jagged? You see like the reflections oh, on that? Yes. So and that direct sunlight. And that's in the window, right? Uh, Robert's window. No, it's it's you know it's it's in the store. It's the first TV, but if you look at the jaggedness, you can actually see the artifacting on it. Interesting. So I mean that's what it looks like with the direct sunlight. Where the hell am I going? Where am I? Okay, I'm looking <laughs> this way. There we go. So I'll do a video on it. You'll see the video, but it, it's unwatchable. 
but it's it's only it's very rare that it hits like that. I've never seen it like that. We've spent again eighteen hours with it. We didn't see it. Let me turn this off. So hopefully that lets people see anti glare is no big deal. I mean, there's no well, rainbow. And, yeah, I think that's the most important part for people to know. Yeah. I mean, it's a really small percentage. It would have to be almost, as FOMO said, in the window to really have that effect. I mean, it's, I, I've never seen it before, but it was right on it. So unless you watch TVs at the beach, you'll still be okay with it. Okay, one second here. Let me... But I have to say, I mean, so my conclusion is this. S95C, it is a touch brighter in specular highlights. Oh, wait, well, you know what I need to do? is I need to put it in active mode so you can see yes. whether it makes a difference, right? When yep. they are both in active mode. So let's try that. Yeah, see if the, um, the tone mapping makes a difference. And yes, to make it fair, I will also put the G3 in its cinema home so you know it doesn't look so terrible. Guys, do me a favor, hit that like button for our buddy FOMO. Again, there's a lot of work doing these comparisons. Yeah, thanks for show clicking like. Thank you everyone love. for coming by for sure. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys being here. Oh, let me see. Where's my I have so many remotes. Now I have to look. Oh, here it is. All right. Dude, so those Samsung three. remotes are terrible. <laughs> I know, right? All right, let's see here. All right, and yeah, I think Cinema Home is all it takes for the LG to look very similar. Okay, so now we're on active. Good. We do a neon frog? What are we at? What was that? What are we doing, Neon Frog? We doing Iguanas? Like yes. What do we got? Yes. We're going to go into Neon Frog. Neon Frog, baby. Neon Frog. But I tell you, that the brightness of all three TVs is phenomenal. Oh, so you mentioned something that was interesting in this one. Yep. Is if there is a brightness difference, it would be that little highlight on the, on the bottom left, right? And yep. S95C is just a touch brighter. And we're talking about these such fine details that both TVs, all three TVs look great. Get the cheaper one. In this case, the S90C, it's $1,000 cheaper than either one at 77 inches, right? And the G3 obviously is 65 inch, but, oh man. So in this, shot, so in this shot, for instance, that left light you're talking about, it doesn't have a halo around it on the 90C. So the 90C has a little bit of a halo around it, which means it may be a little bit lifted in comparison to the 95C. Mm -hmm. So 95C's little light maybe is a touch brighter, that little tiny light versus the the haloed, meaning it might be a little brighter or a little lifted. But I mean, that's not $1,000. And you would never see it in real content. Which this and... isn't real content anyway. <laughs> we talk about right. it now. Oh, FYI, I don't know. But I did give Classy the link, so... Let us know if you're hopping on whenever. Okay, so let's look for the frog. But I think all three TVs look so good. I mean, I, I have. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, you're it's, getting your it's, money's it, worth, but yeah. with the exception of the S90C, you're getting really your money's worth. It's not. It doesn't have the fancy bezel. It doesn't have the fancy Q Symphony. But what does it matter? Yeah. No. And Superlex, those small specular highlights stand out in gaming. You're absolutely right, but they're yes. so close. I don't think they would make a big difference here unless they were. And I tell you, that's the only issue with comparisons as you would never notice it on its own. Are we getting close to the frog? We might do birds before frog, I think. Yeah. Little birds? Yeah, there Let's we go. go. I know my stuff. Parrot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, Barrett. I mean, yeah, you saw this, See, I told you. If you saw this, you know, 10,000 net content, you, you wouldn't know which one to decide. You just get the no. bigger, cheaper TV. What's funny, with that owl shot right there, we used to always talk about LEDs 
um, you couldn't see the eyeballs on an OLED yes, because they used to the crush. Eyeballs. I used to crush sure. the eyeballs. Now you can actually see them, which is really amazing. I mean, this year, guys, is okay. the best year for TVs in a long time. This is the first time I'm able to capture this on a live stream. This is why the QD OLED, the color volume, same brightness, but you have orange in the 90C yeah. and the 95C. The G3, yes, it is yellow. The orange is gone. And this is, and in Dolby Vision, it's exactly the same, by the way. It is when you lower the nit level, the orange is there, but as you raise it, it just cannot preserve it at that brightness. Even with Dolby Vision, it couldn't pull the brightness back enough for the G3 to preserve the luminance of orange. It does yellow fine, and you see it right here, right? So at this exposure where I can capture the brightness of the orange of the 95C and the brightness of the G3, the G3 just doesn't have the additional touch of red. So, but again, it's very scene specific. You don't buy a TV for the scene, but for us as reviewers, I need a reference TV. Yeah. If it wasn't, I mean, honestly, because the 95C has that touch extra luminance, that's why I buy it. But for my home, for family and friends, I get the 90C because it's, would, it's just not worth a thousand dollars. No, and, and it's not course, even. You know what the risk different. is, Brian? You know what the risk is? You receive a TV with no one connect box. <laughs> I think he bought the 90C. I'm just thinking about that. You probably have the 90C, bro. Oh, no way. <laughs> He's like, that, wait a second. I have too. the 90C. You probably have hey, it. What? <laughs> He's like, I oh, promise you, I'm not about. trolling. You have the 90C. If, you're, if your HDMI inputs are on the TV, you're not missing your one connect box. Yes, yes. That's funny. <laughs> he got the 90C. He's like, where's He's my like, oh, my God. Box? All what this do talk. I do? Let's <laughs> talk. Where's that one connect box? <laughs> like I got the wrong one, bro. Oh man, uh, that's always a great scene too. Iguanas. Oh, we're almost there. Come on, Froggy. Come on, sweetheart. Boom. Here it comes. So, oh. what, is your TV, uh, what, what TV is in the lead for you right now as TV of the year? Just everything, the whole experience. Oh, S ninety five. S ninety five is the best TV in the world right now. And where is the Sony X ninety five L and all of that? Right now, it's the best mini LED right now. Oh, I love that. As far as I'm concerned. So, but the I mean, QN90, was... so I, I got a video coming out called, you know, winning is losing. I've seen the QN95C not beat everything, but still ends up being the one I'm buying. So I'm actually buying that TV. So the 85 inch, but it, it's all about use case. What is you, what are you using it for? It means so much more than what an influencer tells you, well, how does it fit your needs? That's so important. But the S95C until the A95L comes out, just edges out the G3. These quantum dot OLEDs and these MLA OLEDs just take, they're bright enough to where they beat out LEDs and then the micro contrast just beats everything else. So they are the two best TVs in the world. The A95L with the processing and their screen does not do this. I don't know if they have a polarizer or not, but the A95K doesn't have this issue with the direct sunlight. So the A95L may be the best TV in the world when it releases, but it's not a conversation. It's not here. Yep. And it'll be $1,000 more at least. So right now, the S95C to me is the best TV in the world. And just a commentary here. Yes, the G3 and the S95C is a touch brighter on the reflection off the nose. That's it. <laughs> Everything else is the same. But oh, that little see. nose. We're chasing the that nose. little the bit of reflection. Off the very top of the nose. You guys see the reflection. It is a touch brighter on the G3 and S95C, and that's where your extra $1,000 is going. Yeah, that's a G. You get to see the cameraman in his nose. <laughs> I got him. Got him. Yeah. That's oh. it. Yeah. I mean, so I'm, I'm, I, for me, S90C, completely impressed with it. To me, it is the must-buy. Absolutely. I mean, Value-wise, a fantastic. Especially at 77 inches. Insane. Yeah. Okay, so question from no. Beam. How would you answer this question? This is a good question. So uh, would you pick up the S95B at closeout instead of the S90 or S95C? No. Why? If you have the money? I mean, what, 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 see what you're saying. Would you pick out the S95B at closeout instead of it? I mean, it's already cheaper now. Why would you want to wait for closeout? But I can't recommend going... The S95B, as good as it is, has just been too much of a roller coaster for many of us. Um, the S9, so my thing is, I would rather go with just the 90C um, than the 95B. 
So the 95B is great. It's just if you have it, it's fantastic. But the roller coaster that that TV has been through, and I just do not trust Samsung in regards to maintaining their older TVs in regards to updates. So I would go with a new, newer version. How about you, FOMO? What do you think? I would take the... Okay. If I'm just streaming, enjoying the best of streaming, I would get the 95B because I know it's closed. That's a really good price. But... Long term, I'd still get the S90C because of its newer processor. It'll probably receive support longer. And at the 77 inch, you're getting the more durable panel because it's already been quoted as being twice as durable. Hey, you know what? If they're going to say that, that's good enough for me. So as far as I'm concerned, if it's only a few hundred dollars, I would still go with the the newer one or or the 95C actually because it's just built better. Well, a lot of times we recommend last year's TVs, the savings has to be substantial, I would say, right, FOMO? It has to be a big yeah. savings for you to go with the older TV, $1,000 or I mean, value-wise. So I would say no. Now, MZ brings up a good question. Why are we talking motion? So I will show you guys motion here, but just between you and I, what are your thoughts on motion differences? I know it used to be a big discussion, and we haven't addressed it well, recently, mostly because all, I don't think it's an issue. Well, it all depends. Motion processing for me is it depends what you like. In the TV community, a lot of times someone will say something has terrible motion because they like using uh, the soap opera effect and the soap opera effect will cause um, artifacting. So they'll say that that TV has bad motion because with soap opera effect enabled, it has artifacting. TVs for me that have excellent processing don't need soap opera effect. So it depends on what you're using the motion processing for. If you like um, using any of those features and you think there's going to be, we don't use them that much. I don't use them at all, in fact. Um, So to me, that's that's, that's a non-issue with most of the TVs these days. There's not a lot of motion blur. But if you have to let me know in the comments, do you love soap opera effect? And is that what you're referring to? And so you guys see quick DSC check. They all look great. The G3 is also out of the box uh, from uh, this case. The G3 is from Valley Electronics. I got it from Robert and, you know, not, not checked for quality control. Uh, had it shipped directly from G from LG's distribution center with no mention that it's going to be in review, whatever. So it's not a golden sample. And I think this year, the 65 inch has definitely improved in their DSC for sure. I mean, it looks great. Well, that was the weak link last year. You have another that super was. chat phone. It was. It was. And over time, when I initially opened it, there was a touch here and there. But now that it's got some break-in, it's got like almost a thousand hours on it. it looks great. It, I have no it's burnt. It's, burn, it's burned off. It's burned off. <laughs> oh, you have a super chat. Oh yeah, and and we will do some motion shortly. Uh, just wanted to address that. So awesome. here we go. Oh, Lizob. You know, every time I see it, for some reason. My, my thing's Beelzebub. I'm like, no, it's not Beelzebub. Oh, the devil. I just call you. don't talk about the devil and you, FOMO. You know, that I is. know. Another excellent <laughs> live stream, FOMO and Brian. Hey, thank you so much for that super chat. And here's a new viewer note. Coming and, and c- contributing. I love it. I really do. Thank, thank you, you for coming really, really by. I appreciate it. All right. And But I will do motion. I'll let you know. So let me just let out. For me, motion sensitivity is... I hate stutter, so I need to have that setting where it's a touch more soap without artifacts, without stutter, but the soap cannot be noticeable to me. And for me, LG, Samsung has done it already, so I don't test it anymore because I have the setting down, which is anti-jutter for the Samsungs on two and three. I'm happy. Unfortunately, there are others who are sensitive to soap opera. They cannot even have two or three. They need it to be at one or zero with no soap, and they'd rather put up with stutter, I can't do that, so I I don't want to enforce my subjectivity, which is, oh, motion's great, and then you're gonna come back, oh, there's too much soap. Well, I don't notice the soap, right? So, yeah. Well, and that's also with OLEDs, too, that that, that instant pixel response hurts them with certain content, so enabling some of the Cinemotion does help it. Um, And I guess you're saying you love soap opera maximum smoothness, that's something Mm -hmm. that is a certain kind of TV. I wouldn't say a TV has bad motion because it can't handle maximum motion interpolation. Um, they're not designed for that in mind, but I mean, you have to find a TV that does that really, really well. I can't recommend one that I think will handle that amazingly. I can try for you if you want with some of the TVs that we have. 
now my camera is Caleb is Caleb loves tech. Is that that's actually Caleb? Is it, yeah, I think so. This Dennison, what's up, baby? Oh look, Caleb's on. Hey, baby. Caleb, what's going on? I get to see him before. Apparently, I he's uh, taking a break from his trumpet practice, right? Oh, it's wedding season. I, I'm going to convince Caleb to come on and play the trumpet one day. Oh, dude, he'll be amazing. I should what's start up, Caleb? burn off service where I just watched your TV for you for 700 hours before coming. <laughs> Just Caleb, go like an asteroid. CNN for seven hundred dollars. Do a little burn off. Vivid mode. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Caleb? I love it. All right, bro. You're gonna bring Classy in. I'm gonna bounce. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm trying to, but I think Classy is. You know, we might just have to end it without Classy coming on. Or is that another stream calling? Even he's is he doing a stream? Oh wait, Classy says he's here. I don't see him anywhere. What? Caleb, what's up? Uh, okay, wait, let me find, for some reason, hey, Classy, you're still there? Okay, so he's in. Let me find out why I can't see him. And here we go. We have another super chat from said Saeed. Okay, waiting for a host. Okay, look at me. I'm just so terrible. All right, well, let me bounce out because maybe it's waiting for me to get out. Oh, wait. Maybe not. That's not Classy. Nope, that's uh, Jack the Ripper, <laughs> the Zodiac Killer. Okay, all right, Brian. So let me. All right, so I'm going to take off, guys. Say goodbye. Yes, yes, yes. And okay, thank you, Brian. We're going to bring in Classy and right, guys. check out Brian's Have channel. That is Brian's Tech Therapy. He is going to do what? What are you doing next week? Um, right now, we have the X95L 85-inch video up. We also have the X95L versus the QN95C next week. We have uh -huh. the Z9K versus the S95C. Um, and then we're going to have the Z9K versus the QN95L. So we'll be doing these 85-inch comparisons you can't see anywhere else. So um, check out those videos. Uh, the X95L especially is phenomenal. Love the TV. What's up, Caleb? And, don't uh, leave me. Don't leave me. That's it. Come on, Caleb. Then jump on camera, baby. Um, but I got to go. Love you guys. Uh, check out my channel, Brian's Tech Therapy FOMO. Thank you, as always, brother. And um, you'll see FOMO on my channel probably next week. We have some definite conversations to have. Always good to see you, Brian. Talk All to right. you later. Good night, guys. Take care. And, and we are here answering your questions about the S90C. Let me try to get Brian in as soon as I can get Classy in and just waiting for it to ring so for some reason it won't ring like no what is happening so let me figure this out so hopefully you guys are enjoying this and okay oh where is my guest so motion if you i'll put this as an example this is a great one from spears and Munslow. so you adjust motion to taste oh here he is I don't know what happened. There he is. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, hey. All right. I will get you in. There you go. Okay. So what happened, man? I couldn't. Did you ring? Did you ring in earlier? Because I didn't hear the ring. At yeah, all. I, I haven't uh, joined you oh. since you switched over to this ecam thing. And yeah, I've just been sitting here. But it's all right. Um, okay. So let's get you to what was it? We wanted to see the. Was yeah. It the so go back flower? to this too. Okay. Um, and just Wait. so you know, you're on disc three right now, which is SDR. Uh, so don't put it in BT 2020 when you're on this disc. Ah, you know, that would be nice if there was a caveat notice on top. Yeah. So, but yeah, what I wanted to show you um, is a couple of areas where you can actually see when you switch it from, you know, the auto gamut, which is P3 to BT 2020. Right. Okay. And then um, turn the color down to 20 when you're in BT 2020. And oh, it gets you pretty about, close on, on both the S90C and the, and the S95C. S95. Yep. Okay. Um, and okay. I'll show you areas where you'll see the difference. All right. So uh, you want it to be a 10,000 nit grade? Doesn't matter. Uh, so let me see what we're in right now. Yep. We're in 10,000 nit. So let's go back to the frog. Yeah. If you can go back Not to that red, um, the red flower. Uh, yeah. I thought it was red flower, whatever it is. Yeah, it, it, the, it is. Uh, it was red a red cactus. Red cactus. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So because if you watch the um, the analyzer where it shows where the BT twenty twenty is, mm -hmm. the whole front of that in red is BT twenty twenty. So oh, I want to okay. show you what happens when you switch it. Oh, this is fun. This is breaking the TVs. I love it. Who's been watching Vincent Dennison? <laughs> I had to put that up. I love it. Uh, hey, guys, have I missed your questions? <laughs> if I miss your questions, uh, keep on asking. I'm sorry. Oh, here's one. And let me keep on rewinding. That way I won't miss it. Okay, so since you have, so let me raise, oops, there we go. I'm like trying Just, to you know, If you uh, do the, the scene skip, each scene is actually one button press now on scene skip. Oh, that makes it faster. Okay. Well, I was more, like on the old disc, it used to skip a bunch of scenes at once. Now it actually goes to each one. Yeah, I noticed that too. I'm trying to adjust our size. I can fit the question real quick here. Okay, so ah, Mr. Lartez. My question for FOMO, since you hate stutter as well, has it happened to you that you have upgraded in size and the stutter motion artifacts got above uh, worse? So generally speaking, yes, stutter is even more emphasized as the TV gets larger. However, going from a 77 or going from a 65 to a 77 isn't that big to me. If I think it would be more noticeable at a 120 inch size or 110 inch size. So this is why movie theaters are having a problem with brighter right. screen. The stutters are more. Oh, there we go. That was it, right? Okay. So, yeah. do you want yeah, to try to pause, pause towards, towards the end, end where, it, where it's brighter? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this is right why there. it's not as bright. So, a combination of brightness and size is where the problem is. It right here? Or a yep. little bit more? That's oh, good. Ah! Just missed yeah. it. And. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So it's a combination of size and brightness that stutter becomes most off this, this remote, that stutter becomes most obvious. And this is why when watching Avatar 2, okay, I'll stop right here. All right, so what am I doing? That this is a you problem. You finish the there. question and then I'll show okay, you. Okay, so Avatar 2 is super bright. If you watch it in Dolby Cinema, you're gonna notice stutter. <laughs> And it was to me like, oh, so you have scenes where it's stutter, where it's cinema motion, where it's soap opera, because they couldn't get it right. And I, have you seen it in the theaters, Classy? Did you notice? Yeah, the, the I, shift? yeah I was, was like, far more annoyed with the switches in frame rate that I did yes, not like at all. Yes. Okay, what am I doing? Okay, so you know how the red um, looks a little bit more orange on the Samsungs? Uh-huh. Okay, so go in and change it to BT2020 and turn the color down um, from 25 to 20. Okay, so let's try that. So the whole front, like lower part of that red and that cactus is, is in BT2020. Oh, one second. Here we go. Okay, so go to... Yeah, so color, you can put to 20. So I'm trying to coordinate this. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Color space settings. Oop. Good. There we go. Okay. Yep. So just put those on custom. And then change the DCI to BT2020. Oh. Yeah, you see how it loses that orange? <sighs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I know when you have the two different Samsung remotes and one it's remote terrible. will control both TVs and the other one won't. So you got to fight with it. It totally. All right. Okay, so you got it on the 95, so you can go back up. Oh, should on I put 95. it on static as well? Oh, yeah. Might as well. Put it on static. All right. And then go back up to the color on the 95. Okay, here we go. And actually, they're similar enough. If you wanted to see the difference, you could leave the 90 in P3. Yeah, let's do that. You know what? That's a good idea. 
And then here, I need to go to color on the 95. So color. Change that to 20. Now, it's not going to be right yet because you still need a full calibration to get it more right. accurate. But you do see where, like, when it's in that P3 mode, how orange it makes the red. And then uh, if you oh, want yeah. to, you, you can throw in the oh, yeah. first disc. And there's a uh, color pattern that I can show you where there's so many gradients of red that are lost when you have it in P3. Okay, so you see it on YouTube. I'm looking at what and see if it's similar to what I see. Yep, it definitely looks more red on the S95C now. So is that how it's supposed to be, that difference? It's closer. It's still going to be oversaturated right now, but with a full calibration, like I said, you'll, it'll be better, and then there wouldn't yeah. be too much of a difference but mm -hmm. except because this actually is bt 2020 this is showing where the g3 and the s90c can't actually get to the right red okay so this is so let's just and the use... s90c could if you switched it but because we have it in p3 so this is really good i'm going to stop here and just talk about this real quick because a lot of people this is a confusion that people have the differences you know what am i getting out of a color space and all that stuff so on this disc, BT2020 is the front part, and it's clearly in BT2020, not in DCI-P3, which means if your TV cannot cover BT2020, it cannot show the color. It can only come close. So the G3 represents that coming close, right? We know it's only, what, 75% of BT2020, and specifically, it doesn't cover this part of the red. On the mm -hmm. S95C, what Class C and I just did was we got into BT2020, lowered color saturation down to, what was it, 20? 20. Yep. 20. And again, this still isn't going to be as accurate. Right. As you still need to calibrate. Full calibration. But, but, but it is in BT2020 yeah. space. And because it's QD OLED, it's showing you the reds that the G3 and the S90C does not show. And the S90C is in P3. That's why it looks more similar to G3, mm -hmm. right? So the S90C is in DCI P3. And the S95C is now in BT2020. This is the differences. And the red is a little, a touch more accurate. So that's very cool. Thank you, Classy. Now, are you, so you have the S95C. Are mm -hmm. you now watching in this mode now in BT2020? Is Yeah, it I have it calibrated in BT2020 and there's other areas I can show you. So if you go backwards a couple scenes, uh -huh. um, you know, the one where it's really, um, it's a, uh, just keep going back, but it's one of the ones where the sky has like oranges and reds, it's real dark, it's night. Um, okay. In front of you is the rocks, and like when there's crushing, you can't see them. Got so it. If, if, just do the scene canyon? skip. Is it the back canyons? A few canyon times. Scene? Yeah, it's, it's no, one it's of those. Okay. It should be I don't know, a handful of scenes back. We'll have um, to make here, sure too, you, you'd be able to see a lot of color difference. I definitely want to share that with Samuel when he comes in so that he knows. Okay. Oh, yeah. It. it looks like there's more red in the S95C. S95C looks a bit desaturated for sure. Let me adjust exposure to get it right here. Yeah, that's the other thing is when it's in the P3 mode, um, it's still way better near black saturation or very dark uh, luminance mm -hmm. uh, saturation when it's in the P3 mode than it is on the G3. But being in BT2020 and after calibrating it, it's even better yeah. than that. Yeah, the G3 feels a little oversaturated. And again, so everyone who's tuning in. Um, also, I think is the G3 calibrated. still in Cinema Home? Or did you change the G3? Oh, yes, it is still in Cinema Home. Let me move it back to Filmmaker. So can you, you want to explain the difference between Cinema Home and Filmmaker for those who, like, wait, you know, what's it, other than brightness, is so, there a color difference? Uh, it depends if you've changed the settings or not. Because I nah, think Cinema Home is, just, would have the color at 60 instead of 50. And yeah. So. Okay. All right. There you go. It looks... Oh, wow. So Cinema Home was really oversaturated. Yeah. Okay, much better. All right, so... And then the 90C, did you put that back to static, or is that on attic? It is. Unactive? It should still, yeah. I think I you put it on static, but... I think someone it, it isn't static. It's just the colors P3, but here, I'll double check real mm -hmm. quick. It's funny, the remote for the S90C controls both, but the remote for the 95C only controls yep. the 95C. That's how it is for me with the, the QN95. Okay, no, the Aha, N90 is still inactive. There it is. There we go. 
Okay, now they're both in static. Okay. Okay, so now the only difference between the three TVs, all three are in full micro mode, all three in their most accurate luminance mode. The S95C is now in BT2020 with the adjustments made to color so that it most accurately represents BT2020. And the 90C is still in DCI-P3, but we can make it like the 95C. We just want to show you guys the difference between the two because ultimately the two TVs are so similar that yeah. at yeah. least you get to compare P3 versus BT2020 when the content is providing you BT2020. And the G3, because it's a Q, uh, W OLED, it cannot hope to get above 85% or 80%. Mm -hmm. So it's limited to P3 mostly anyway. Okay, mm -hmm. so you were saying. Yeah. All right, uh, so go ahead and keep backing up. Uh, but okay. also when it's in the P3 mode, it, the color luminance um, isn't quite reaching what it measurably should in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in BT2020, it does hit the color luminance that it should. So that's another area where... Oh, is this the one? Difference. No, keep going. One? it's like two more, two or three more back. Um, before this one, right here. Ah. So okay. if you pause on this one, another thing with the BT2020 setting is you have smoother gradients. So if you go get up close... I bet oh, you'll yeah. see that it's yeah, yeah. smoother in the sky. Yeah, let me turn up this exposure a bit so you guys can see that, hopefully. Yeah, because like, even through the camera, I see a little bit more rings on the 90C. But if you, in person, like this is definitely something that's really hard to see through a camera. But if you, in person, go look at the gradients in the sky... Uh, you should see smoother. Oh with the, yeah, the, the G three has the G three has banding, for sure. Yeah, the G three definitely is going to be the worst. The ninety C yeah. and P three should be second, and then the S ninety five C should be. Yeah, the best there, there is a touch of there is a touch of banding on just a touch on the ninety C, but now I'm looking for it. Yeah. I cannot unsee the banding on the G three, and there is no banding at all on the S ninety five C. So let me try to mm -hmm. make this so you guys hopefully can see it. You might not be able to. But you know what? What can you do? Yeah. And oh, that's yeah, the problem can. with the G3, where in HDR, the darker colors, the saturation is just wrong. So it creates yeah. more posturization, more banding. So, I mean, this is interesting because normally, so in movies like, actually, I, this is a great thing to address. Is it the TV or the source? Because in your discussion with you know, Spears and Munsell, Don, Don Munsell and, and Stacey Spears, they said in that famous scene with the Martian where there's banding, it's the source. Yep, yep. sometimes <laughs> it's the source, sometimes it's the TV. So, And, and you don't know, uh, right? I mean, unless you talk to the studio where they say, yeah, it's the source. Well, you can know huh? by looking at measurements. Um, okay. So when, when we're done here, I'm going to have a stream after. Um, and then oh, yeah, I'll yeah. be doing like just Q&A and just talking about you know different models of TVs this year and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about the, some of the more, some of the issues more in depth with the G3 and I have like charts that show where you can measurably see how the saturation is wrong at different luminance levels. Um, and that's what creates the banding and makes it more visible. Okay. So now before I wrap up, cause I do want to hand you over cause I know you're celebrating. What is it? What, what is this? Uh, uh just, uh, 20,000 subs. yeah. 20, subscribers. I love it. Congratulations, you know, you, you're easily one of the most knowledgeable guys out there. And when I, I know when I first met you, you weren't even a calibrator. Look at you now. Yep. <laughs> you were an enthusiast like everybody else. Now you're actually making money flying around calibrating. And, and I just love it when Caleb shows up. Have we figured out why it is that Samsung aren't auto switching? And Caleb, you know, you've been reviewing these TVs from the very beginning, right, Classy? Since the QN 8FN, 9FN. With the all the way back to the yeah, first the HDR back. Samsungs, the KS8000, same thing. You know what? I asked someone, Caleb, I asked the team at HDR10+, Plus, and the response was, really? <laughs> it's like, really? They didn't know. And so they sent, obviously, a message back to Samsung corporate in Korea. But the team here that's in charge of evangelizing HDR10+, Plus, mm -hmm. they were never aware because we were playing with BT2020 because they were showing me the demo on HDR10+, mm -hmm. Plus and why gaming on it is better. And I said, wait, you understand, in BT2020, it's over set, you know, going over all the issues, right? And they're like, really? I go, get your measurements out. You tell me, right? And let Korea know, because this is an ongoing. So hopefully, something happens next year. But I love so the, I the, the, the whole picture of the problem is all HDR content is BT2020. 
P3 yeah. is what they're using in the studio to target because they know that's what the displays are more capable of doing. But it's always in BT2020 container. So the TV on auto should just go into BT2020. The problem with Samsung is their BT2020 mode out of the box way oversaturates everything. So their P3 mode is better and that's what they're having it auto select. But realistically, it should be the BT2020 mode needs to be better calibrated from the factory. And then auto should put it in BT2020. And the P3 option should only be there for you know uh, creators that want to restrict it down to P3. And so this is a great question that Alicia has, and I do too. So you know, we have the S95C adjusted, BT2020 taking color down to 20. Uh, so with BT2020 setting at color at 20, is it good? Is this, I mean, if you don't calibrate it, is There's this- There's still some cool? issues. Um, so skin and tones in particular can be P3? a little magenta. Okay. Um, that's kind of the main thing. And that's why it needs calibration. Uh, but if you want to use BT2020 and it doesn't look that bad, so go to the go to the skin tones, like back out of this and go to the skin tones, just see how it All looks. Right. Okay. I can tell you with you know full calibration, everything looks great on it. And there's definitely a huge difference. Um, so but... actually, her second part, which would you choose then? P3 filmmaker mode, as is right, which is great, or BT2020 with color and 20. Which would you choose, or which would you recommend for the team? So if it's um, if someone's buying it and not getting it calibrated, just leave it in auto. Um, okay. If you want to try it in BT2020 and see if anything looks offensive to you uh, with the color turned down, then you can do it that way. Uh, but if you are having it calibrated, and that's the other issue is the CMS is very tricky. Uh, so oh. not many calibrators will probably know how to do it, um, but depending on who calibrates it, um, they should be able to get it uh, better in BT2020. So, I mean, if you're you know, looking I, here at the skin tones, do you think, see anything that looks wrong or off? Oh, wait, let me turn up. Keep in mind that the G3 without calibration, all the skin tones are too green. Okay. There we go. Okay, just wanna make sure the exposure is correct. So we see the ladies in all their glory. All right, now. Yeah, so like, especially the one in the back middle, um, that's really pale and has okay. like the, the little bits of like red in the chest and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that one's definitely her. wrong in P3. Okay, one second, let me go there. I think she's up next. There we go, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I can tell you P3 definitely looks wrong. And then in the G3, um, is going to be too green. Okay. Okay, so my exposure is correct now. And let me see, because I'm, I'm looking, I'm using YouTube just to eyeball it, right? And it's very close. Of course, you have the blue push on the, G3. The other thing you is, can do is set the tint on the S95C to green one. Um, that's where mine's at. So to help a little bit. So let me ask you this. This is supposed to be SDR or HDR? I forgot. What HDR. is this? this is, so this is HDR. Disc three we, is SDR. Ah, this is okay. 1000 nit HDR. And her face is actually going to, yeah, you're right. The S90C has a touch of green, right? Because it's in P3. It's not, it's lacking the saturation. Is that the issue? Uh, it's so the, the skin tones, like I said, are just going to be. It's such a generic thing to say skin tones because right. there's so many. I mean, right. you can measure 30 different colors for skin tones, um, and they're all just going to move up and down depending on which one. It's it's uh, finding the balance of which right. gets them closer. So from one person to another, it may be more accurate or less accurate, um, except for when you have a grayscale error like the G3 has where it has green in the range where skin tones are, all of them. Mm -hmm. That means all the skin tones on the G3 are too green. So if the S90C is looking like the G3 skin tone, then it's too green. Mm. And it doesn't. Okay, so the S90C, the, the G3 has more reds in it. So that's probably, and it's BT2020 as well. Yeah, when you put it in BT2020, it's going to be more red. Yeah. And it is. 
and it looks i mean it looks it looks more well if it's accurate it looks better i don't know which so one if you put the possible. tint to green one it'll be a hair closer the tint on the S95C? Um, but the, yeah but the you know again the cms needs some correction as well um and then also the since you don't have the grayscale done the luminance isn't going to be exactly right so you tent to g1 yep all right so, and again right. the going through a camera yeah it's not the yeah, same yeah. especially no. g3 it's it's the s 35 and the s90c are closer to what we see the g3 it's just you cannot just for the blue when you have two different technologies in the same scene, right? Unless you have two different cameras, mm -hmm. but anyway, so, okay. So uh, how about last five minutes, last call for questions while both Classy and I are here. And then why don't you share with me your link real quick, Classy, so that if you have any more questions, because Classy has these TVs as well, the 95C, the 90C, the QN, all, we almost have all the same TVs right now. And he's able to answer more technical questions about exactly gaming settings, right? I mean, that to me is a nightmare. And there's this one thing I wanted to ask you. So the S90C, I'm hearing that if you go into the service menu, you play with Anna Peak. What is that exactly? And what are your thoughts on adjusting the S90C? Because I notice even when I don't go into the service menu, honestly, that peak luminance on the 95C and 10,000 nit content, if it wasn't side by side and I just walked from one TV to the next, I could not tell the difference. Yeah, I would not suggest doing that. Um, I, I wouldn't either. It's definitely uh, definitely a risk there, um, and it has other issues and can affect the OTF tracking and whatnot. I just, no, I don't think anyone should be doing that. Um, and all it's going to do is just make like 3% window and smaller, brighter, really. Um, so... It would hardly be noticeable, and you're just taking more of a risk. So to answer your question, Carlos, out of the box, the answer is it needs to be calibrated. If you did what we did, which is set it to BT2020 and take color down to 20, it's better. And maybe put green tint to green plus one. But we suggest calibration because it's, but it's close, though. I mean, let me ask you this. Is this within 3%? I know this panel very for, mo for most of the color, uh, most of the skin tones and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like I said, you're also getting smoother gradients. You're getting better saturation in, in darker areas. Uh, you're getting better color luminance at the higher end. So actually more benefits there. Let me stop you right there. And that's something I did not know until you showed us just now is the gradients. That is the most visible improvement. So if you guys just joined us, go back 20 minutes. If you notice in that scene with the gradient sky in BT2020, it's perfectly smooth. In P3, the 90C shows a little bit of gradient. And because the G3 is not capable of the entire color gamut of BT2020, it shows even more banding. And that's why. It's not just to be in BT2020 to eliminate some of that banding, but you also have to be in a QD OLED to eliminate some of that banding. So that's a great test to have. Well, see, that's I not even too, right? the gamut issue. That's just their saturation issue. Ah, uh, so, so on the G3. Saturation, you're jumping yeah. from color to color, right? Yeah, the, each jump between, like, so, so you can take as many measurements as you want, but if you did five measurements of going from, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100% red at mm -hmm. different luminance levels, it's just... It, can make larger jumps than it's supposed to, or and a jump can be yeah. can move in the X Y and be in just completely the wrong space. And when that happens, you see that break in the colors more often. And this is and that's why what's wanna... really bad. And when you see that pulsating from like uh -huh. flashlights or that flare uh, in really dark scenes, that's because Muster of Hunter? how bad it is near black. Yeah. Yep. And so this is something that I want to address too. Is people are always saying, "I I can't wait till twelve bit panels." We can't even push the limits of 10-bit panel. As you guys can see, unless you address things like processing and get the right technology, QD OLED, W OLED, if you have W OLED and a 12-bit panel, let's say for the sake of argument, but the W OLED isn't capable of the full BT2020, 
you're still going to get banding and you're going to blame it on the 12-bit panel. So there's so many moving parts as to the benefits of 12-bit until we fix something else and get 10-bit to its max performance. Let's not talk 12-bits, right? I mean, we're not even at the maximum performance of BT2020 unless you go QBO. Most of them are 8-bit plus FRC anyway. Yeah. And, and you know, what are you going to do? Uh, classy question for you. What do you think is the best QD OLED monitor? And do you know anything about Gen 2 and when they are coming? Uh, so I wasn't a fond, I wasn't too fond of the Alienware just because of the implementation. And even with calibration, you couldn't fix near black gamma on it. Um, haven't seen any of the others yet. I do want to look at some of the 49 inch ones that are coming. Um, Cause I am, I do want a HDR monitor. Um, well, yeah, let me ask you that. right now. If you can fit a 55, just get a 55 S90C or S95C. But if you I, can't, I was, look at the 49-inch ones. I, I wanted to ask you that because we know for sure there are only two sizes available in the monitors, the 34-inch and the 49-inch. But both of them curved. One. Does that affect you? And they're not 4K. It's curved 1440p yeah, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make a difference for you? Because I can't do it because it's curved. Mm -hmm. I do not like curved displays, but with the 49 inch, because of how wide it is, some of them only have a very slight curve. That should be fine because it's what, 51, <laughs> whatever, 100. Uh, what, whatever wide. it is, right. Yeah. So, you know, on those maybe, um, on the four, you know, 3440, 1440 ones, uh, I don't like curve on those. So, and I'll tell you guys that for creators who don't do like high end HDR, you need that thousand nits of specular highlights. I strongly recommend, because I have it right now, is the inkjet printed RGB OLED. It's amazing. I love it. And I know it's also a panel lottery. Some people get one that's broken out of the box or whatnot. I have the Asus Pro Art. Can't go back. That inkjet printed OLED is so good. And, you know, I don't do HDR grading, but it gets bright enough for sure. APL goes up to 300 nits. It is just awesome. So, yeah. OLED monitors is the future, and I'm hoping it goes down in price because it looks like TCL is going to continue to produce it for the pro market. So it's the way to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is throw out some more questions for the next two minutes. Don't forget, Classy just shared his link. We're going to head over there so he can celebrate 20,000 subscribers. Congratulations. And we'll continue answering questions over there. Anyway, thank you, everyone. The last few questions, if there are any, but it looks like conclusion S90C. 77 inch performs identically except specular highlights a touch brighter in 10,000 nit content. And that's what I put it on with Spears and Munsell disc. If it was 1,000 nit, it wouldn't make a difference. And that, my friends, is 99.9% .9 of all streaming content, all disc content is under 1,500 nits, which means you're not gonna tell the difference. And so for Classy and I, because we do this comparing TVs, we're not going to notice a difference either if, unless we pull out the 10,000 nit on Spears and Muscle, which means the G3 will look nearly identical with the exception of some of the banding issues because of its limited color, <laughs> color bandwidth, I guess. So, yeah, I think the S90C is a great TV. What are your recommendations in terms of the S90C use cases or what are your thoughts on the S90C? I, th I think it's the go-to you know, value for the premium display of, you know, for 2023. Um, I actually did could tell a little bit of a difference in that uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children scene, you know, the with the Florida sign and the ocean when you were showing that. Oh, earlier. you know what? That scene, yep. you could see a little bit of a brightness difference. So stuff like that, those really yeah. high brightness outdoor scenes, you'll see the S95C getting a little bit brighter. Um, so if you want that headroom, and especially mm -hmm. in gaming, like I think gaming yeah. is where you would see that difference a little bit more often, consider the 95C. Um, but otherwise, the 90C is still going to be better than anything else until the A95L, but that's going to cost even more. Absolutely. My recommendation, everyone, is 77-inch S90C at the price of a C3. I think LG's in trouble. <laughs> just, just look at the value proposition, right? That's so, part hey. of my uh, stream is talking about all this, but yeah, spoiler. Oh, okay. let's, I, let's, let's I like the G3, yeah. but with the problems it has and the performance it has, it should be priced like the S90C. That's my problem with it. Let's help 
Layartes one more time before we leave. Thank you for being on till the end. So you get the last question. My new 77-inch S95C hurts my eyes after the LG C10, even on low brightness. Why? Like, why does it hurt his eyes? What's the, what's the deal? What are your thoughts, Classy? Um, are you talking about in SDR? You know, what picture mode are you using? If you have a filmmaker, vivid. it shouldn't make any difference. Um, and if you're uh, in SDR, turn down the brightness. And if it's not a brightness thing that's hurting your eyes, I have no idea about you know the blue light and how people, blue people light. are affected there by blue light. Um, mm -hmm. So that could be a thing. Yep. And yeah. Oh, and what about, and so this, that's the link guys. So we'll be there in like a minute or two, but I wanted to, one more question. I thought this is a good question. What about the 55 or 65 S90C? Is it as good? What are your thoughts about the rumors that maybe it made the second generation? Are they all second generation? I think they should be, but what, what do you think? Is it a mix? Uh, at least right now, the early ones appear to be gen one. Um, when they switch, who, there's no way to know. Okay. You know the same thing with the uh, when the Evo panels came out or the WBE panels from LG with the yep. Sony A80J and the C1. Overseas, they seem to always get the older ones first, whereas we started getting the newer ones sooner. Uh, same thing with the C2 42 inch. When those first came out overseas, they had older panels. When they came out here, they were all newer panels. So. Hey, you know, so Lertes added some detail. It's as if it was flickering and the brightness was not constant. Is that PWM or is it something else? Uh, maybe did you accidentally turn on BFI? Ah, yes. So under the clarity menu, make sure the um, black frame insertion sure is turned off. Make sure the clarity, what do they call it on this one? Clarity, right? Uh, it's in the clarity clear. menu. Um, it's the one with the toggle. It's either on or off. I think it's motion something. Yeah, that's definitely a flicker, but it comes off though. So make sure you don't turn that on. Okay, everyone, we're heading over to Classy Stream right now. Thank you for joining us. And thank you again to Brian, who joined us at the beginning. And at the end, S90C, 77 inch, highly recommended. 55, 65, that's all I can say. Until next time, stop the phone. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone for showing up.